with still people. We back for another classic episode of uh, Off the Court with Big Stars Legends Week. Um, tonight we got a special guest, my man Michael Jordan, Pennsylvania's Michael Jordan, my man from the mid '90s, um, Abington Friends uh, School here in Pennsylvania, man. Uh, MJ's legend, legendary high school career, legendary. Uh, college career at Penn. He gonna get on once he sends me the request, and um, MJ's gonna tell his story, man. Um, Y'all know the format. MJ's gonna tell his story, and at the very end, we are gonna have a, a nice Q and A with the people. Um, let you guys interact with MJ, ask him some questions about his career and um, anything you guys want to know about. Uh, let me see how this works. Get my man on here. Send MJ. Send me the request, or I'll send you one. MJ, go ahead. The legend was good, man. Uh, and can you hear me? All right, I don't want to yeah. be on here like Teddy Riley. You know I mean? <laughs> can, can, can you give yourself some light so we can see you a little bit better? Yeah. There we go. All now right. I can see. Now I can see the legend. All right, ah, there you, you go. go. You fucking <laughs> down, MJ. <laughs> get yourself, get yourself comfortable, man. We're gonna be here for a while. All right. I'm just charging up that way. We won't uh, have yeah, to worry yeah. about that. I'm on your time, man. Take All right. Time, no, man. we good. Let's go. Time. We good. We good. Hey, so um, right off the top, you know, I don't want to waste no time. I got a lot I want to talk to you about. Um, I just want to say, first off, thank you so much for your um, support and your participation. Pretty much every one of the uh, Legends Week interviews, you know, you've been on, you've been, you've been interacting. Um, you know, because this is all, you know, a lot of guys are your era as well, like, you know, Rashid Brooklyn and all those guys. So, you know, thank you for, you know, asking questions and participating. Um, also, um, you know, this, this, you know, Legends Week, you know, the archives paying homage to the old school, you know, by now, this means a lot to me. Um, two goals I have, man, I just don't want individuals like from the 90s and 80s and 90s and, you know, beyond, that, that was your era watching you play. I don't want them to forget about Michael Jordan. I don't want them to forget about your legacy. That's why I do this. Also, okay. this new generation of kids, I just want to educate them on who you are. Just in case they see you in the gyms, they don't just be like, you know, who's this old head? Yes, no. That's, that's, that's our MJ right there, man. So pay homage, you know what I'm saying? So, so that's why I do it, man. So um, you, you, you want to get right into it? You know, uh, I just want to say thanks for, you know, thanks for having me. You, you, you've had some, you know, amazing guests on here. Like you said, a lot of guys that played, you know, in my era. Um, I played against and with with a lot of those guys. So, you know, seeing them and interacting with them, like you said, it was just it was just awesome, man. You know, and it brought back a lot of memories. No doubt, no doubt. All right, well, it's your time to shine, MJ. Uh, we're gonna get into a game of ten random questions. You already know the routine. Um, so, the first question: um, What's the most points you ever scored in a game at any level? At a uh... ooh. Highest I've, I've ever scored at, at any level, um, and that was I think that was in Germany. How, how many? Uh, no, no, uh, thirty-three. I think I had thirty-three. One. I think that's my highest was thirty-three, and actually it was I was in Italy, gotcha. and that, we played uh, we played uh, Bologna at the time, and uh, they had a guy over there. It was funny. They called him the the. He's supposed to be the Jordan stopper, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had lit him up, and I should have had like forty. You know, because I had, I think I had 30 going into the fourth. Gotcha. And I, I stopped shooting. I don't know oh. why I did, but I stopped shooting. But I should have fried, you know, I fried him. I ended up with 33, but I should have had like 40, 45. Yeah, should have kept the pressure on yeah, yeah, man. I, for some reason, I stopped shooting. I started passing the rock. And I, I should have no just doubt. kept scoring. All right. Um, 80s. You know, you're an 80s baby like myself. Um, what was one of your favorite? What was one of 70s. your favorite people? Oh, oh well, yeah, you got you, got you. Um, <laughs> well, you, you, high school wise, you was class of um, class of ninety five, ninety six. All right, it's a, bit of a, it's a little bit of a, it's a little, it's a tiny bit, uh, bit of a delay on your end. It's kind of hard to hear you a tad bit. Turn these, uh, these ear, your ear, ear jump. Is that key? Is that better? Much better. Uh yeah, it was these these oh. ear pods, man. They, they, All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now we perfect. Ain't no delay. I gotta get right some. I gotta get some new joints. <laughs> <laughs> All 
<laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. So um. So so class of you class of ninety five or ninety six. Ninety six. Ninety six. Yeah. Because I did a I did a year at, at Germantown High School. My freshman year at Germantown okay. High School. And then gotcha. when I went from public to private school, I uh I pretty much you know reclassified. Okay. Uh, you know I went there and they they I passed the test. I could have been in the tenth grade, but I missed my ninth grade year because uh, I got hurt playing football and then I didn't get a chance to play or try out for the varsity team where, and it got cut from the JV team. So I was like, you know what, you know, why not get my year back, you know? No doubt. So um, favorite, uh, favorite TV show growing up in the eighties. One of mine was, you know, like, like different strokes, you know, like Knight Rider. Those like, what was one of your favorite eighties TV shows back in the day? Oh man, I would, uh, I was a big cartoon guy, mm -hmm. you know? So I'd say like, you know, uh, G.I. Joe, Transformers, you know, uh, He-Man. Of you course. Know, of you course. Know, them, them, them was my, you know, my, my favorite joints back in the day. So I, I was a big cartoon guy. So I used to always watch them. You know, Spider-Man and Friends used of to course. come on Saturday. Spider-Man so and Friends, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was a cartoon guy and I kind of still am. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Well, I was I was scrolling through your Instagram page and, and, and it was like nostalgia for me. Um, I can tell you're a wrestling fan. I don't know how oh, I got yeah. that. Idea. Oh, yeah. I don't know how I got that idea. <laughs> All right. So, so in the '80s, growing up, whether it was NWA wrestling or, or WWF, who was one of your favorite wrestlers back then, or a couple of your favorite? Uh, my favorite wrestlers, like when I was when I was younger, started when I first started watching wrestling. I would say, uh, you know, like uh, Dusty Rhodes, uh, the Road Warriors is my favorite tag team. Still, my favorite tag team of all time. You know, Hawk and Hawk, Hawk and Animal. Yes. Yeah, dog. And they used to come out to that. You know. I am Iron Man. You know what I mean? That joint used to have, you know, get get me hype, ready to go. Yeah. Hey, um, you ready to go off the top ropes? Off the yeah, man. Somebody. You, you know, uh, Nikita Koloff, you know, oh, yes. uh, with the Russian sickle, you know, those oh, guys. Uh, yes. You know, the Four Horsemen, of course, you, yes. you know. So, um, you know, those are probably my, my favorite wrestlers, you know, back then. Obviously, Hulk Hogan and, uh -huh. and all those guys. No doubt. Um, favorite NBA player growing up? Growing up, uh, my favorite NBA player, um, is, this is probably going to surprise a bunch of people at first, I, I, it was Mark Jackson. Okay. And uh, I used to wear 13, actually, before I switched okay. over to 23. Gotcha. Um, it was Mark Jackson and obviously, you know, Jordan was, were my favorite favorite basketball players. Um, I, I knew I could, could be like Mike Jordan. So, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of wanted to, I liked Mark Jackson, the way he played. You know, he was a very good passer and, you know, a cerebral point guard. So I used to watch him a lot. And, uh, you know, he's probably one of my favorite players, you know, growing up. But, I, you know, obviously MJ is, is my, my favorite player. But, you know, a lot of people don't know that uh, Mark Jackson was the guy. That's why I started wearing 13. You know, Mark Jackson, he's playing for the Knicks. He used to throw them butt between the leg passes, the big Pat Ewing coming down. Yes, yes, you know so, <laughs> for yeah. sure. All right, if, um, okay, so you're, you're on the scene, you coach, you're on the scene, you know, like the kids of, of today. So if you pick, if, if somebody put together like an all-star five from the Philadelphia area, the suburbs of right now, from like an all-star five of all, and you, okay, and, and had to play against an all-star five from your era, including yourself, who would you bring up? Who, who would you bring? Bring with me from my era? Yes, oh. including yourself. Yeah, so well. So it's you, who else? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm one, my first pick, I, I got to bring the bean. You know, I, I, cause that's, you know, that, that gives us the win right there. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to go my class, you know, so yeah. I don't leave anybody out. Uh, I will bring the bean, uh, you know, Donnie Carr, mm. uh, Yad Davis, you know, and then, uh, we got to get somebody to, to, to clog that paint. I would say probably like, uh, you know, like Patrick Sanders, uh, he played on, on that, uh, I would pick five guys from off that Sunny Hill Junior team that I was on, you know, the, and then uh, the, 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 the yeah, and then just grab, you know, I just grab another guard off that team, you know, you like, can't go wrong, you know, to T Harb, uh, Dave Braithwaite, uh, Corsi, you know what I mean? You can't go wrong grabbing one of those, one of those guys, you, you know what I mean? And just and just let it do what it do, and you know, just basically <laughs> space out the floor, play defense, and get a ball to the bean and let them go to work. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, if you could, if you had to eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh man, I gotta one food for the rest of my life. What would it be? You know what, man? I hate to do this, but <laughs> chicken. 
No doubt. I'm I feel a, I'm you. I'm perpetuate the stereotype, man. You know, I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say chicken, dog, because you chicken can make world, it a man. whole bunch of ways, and it's hard. Chicken, to mess you, up. I mean, we talking chicken salad. Yeah, yeah, you, like you know everything. what I'm saying. So you know, you can make it so many ways, and, and you can't mess it up. So I'm, I'm gonna go with chicken. <laughs> um, you played um, professional ball overseas, and of all the different countries that you played in, if you had to make one of those countries your home forever, you know, what, what, if you had to make one of those countries your home, which one would it have been? Um, I would probably say Germany. Okay. I spent most of my, uh, uh, majority of my career was spent over there. Um, I could still have a lot of friends over there. Um, and, and, you know, I really enjoyed my time there. And mm -hmm. I, I think uh, probably Germany was, would be the place where, you know, if I, if I, could, if I could stay, I would uh, go there. You know, followed yeah, yeah. by like, Italy and then you know maybe Spain. Got you. Um, growing up in the eighties, uh, what's one of your favorite candies? You know, like candy. You know, growing up in the eighties. Yeah, I, I would say uh, you know now laters. Now legendary. Yeah, Let, eat any, some any now, particular save flavor. Some later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Any particular flavor? Uh, the apple Jones, yo. Apple, apple, watermelon, pineapple. Yeah. Some, some things <laughs> was hitting, you know. Yes, they and were. And then and then those little, you know, the little flavored Tootsie Rolls. Yes. Tootsies, yeah. Yes. Like they call it Tootsies now, but them, the, the little favorite Tootsie Rolls, them, them, them Jones was all that. For real. <laughs> um, okay, I, I, a, lot of, a lot of 80s stuff. Um, you know, coming up middle school, high school, we, our, our, our elementary and middle school days, you know, video games are different these days, but we had Nintendo. What yep. was, was, was one of your favorite Nintendo games? Uh, one of my favorite, I just have to go with Mario, Super Mario 3, man, and then Contra, you know, Contra was Contra. always, Look, oh, you know, up, oh, down, oh, up, oh, down, oh, left, oh, right, oh, left, right, oh, left, right, ABAB, select oh, star, oh, yeah, you know yeah. I'm getting What's the, the code, code What's the code, say it again, <laughs> say it again, say it again. It's a up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, B A B A B or B A B A select start, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know I had to get my 30 men on that, John. That's uh, right. <laughs> and the, the worst part about Contra is when you, because you're playing with your brothers or, or your homies. And then they 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 killing you on purpose by leaving yeah. you when you below them and you they going up the John leaving you down the bottom. Next thing you know, you out. So, yo, we used to get in fist fights over that. Like, yo, <laughs> I get the good weapon and then you leave me and I'm oh man. <laughs> yo, Contra was the yo. I love that. I, one of my other favorite games was on um, Russian Attack. I love Russian Attack. Okay. Too. Russian Attack too, man. Classic games on Nintendo. Yeah, man. we Classic played Spy games. Hunter. Was that Spy Hunter? Was that the Spy Hunter? Hunter? Yeah, was that the game Hunter. where they let you off the back of the car? Of the car? And, you had the... and then you, yeah, yeah, yeah. The oil slick. Yeah, and all yeah. That. Okay, yeah. Spy <laughs> Hunter. Yeah. Uh huh. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong yeah. Jr. You know what I mean? Classic games, man. We was Classic. out. We played. Uh, we played Cincinnati this year. They had this. Uh, this bar out there, man. It was like a video game bar. Okay. And they had all the old school joints, yo. Super Mario Bros, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., uh, Dig Dug, all Dig them Dug was dog. one of my yo. favorite too. Cuber, yeah, had, yo, all, Jowls, they had all them joints, yo. I was yeah. like, oh man. So we stayed in that job for 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 quite a bit. Just <laughs> just took you just took you man, back. I played all those games, dog. I was on there. They couldn't get me. Don't out. forget Frog. Did you say Frogger? Frogger, 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 Frogger was broke. I was a little disappointed. Frogger oh, was broke. Man. But yeah, it, them all classics, man. No doubt. Last question. Um, you were—I'm sure you were following the uh, the Last Dance series. Yeah. Um, what's something that you know stuck out to you that you didn't know, or just you know something that was interesting about you, for, you know, from your perspective? Um. For me, I I grew up, uh, uh during that time, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I was so I I kind of knew a lot of the stuff that was going on with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um. I, I I would say what stuck out to me was I, I didn't know the the amount of pressure that affected MJ. You, you know what I mean with the you know with his dad passing. I I knew it was tough, but I didn't know how much it affected him and how much he wanted to, how much he needed to get away. You know mm -hmm. from when he retired. You, you know what mm -hmm. I mean and and had enough. Yeah. And, but you know a lot of it was. You know, I, I knew a lot of it because of, uh, you know, just being around and, and growing up during that time and, and being, you know, being in, uh, around and, and, and watching. So yeah. and you kind of knew and you had like an inside track because you, you knew pros and, and, and things like that. And guys would come back in the summertime and, and tell mm -hmm. stories. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I appreciate it, man. Um, you know, just getting warmed up here. So uh, yep. just want to get right into it, man. Um, I, just like, just like, you know, all the other legends, man, obviously I have some questions prepared, but I don't want to get in your way 
or interfere with you just being able to freely just, you know, tell your story. So I'll, I'll just kind of interject, you know, when necessary. Um, yep. But I'm going to just let you go, man, and have some fun telling your story, man. So if you could just start us off from the beginning and just introduce yourself to the people, man, and just um tell us where the MJ story began, man. Uh, Mike Jordan, you know, uh, where it all began. Honestly, man, I, I was a playing, I was a football player. Were uh, you? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like to play football, man. I played for the Northwest Raiders. Uh, they were... You know, our home base was at Lonnie Young Recreation Center. Um, didn't play basketball until I was about 12, turning 13. And and I ended up playing because my man, Eric Worley. Um, e. Worley, Westchester. Yeah, e. Worley, yeah that's there. right. Yep. E. Worley, uh, they were short a player. And he was like, yo, Mike, we need a player. We, we only got four. We need five guys. Like, just come play. I'm like, yo, I can't play. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> You sure? He like, dog, we just need a body. Like, just come play. Yeah. So I went up there and I played with them and I loved it. You know what I mean? I, I was terrible. Don't get me wrong, but I loved it. You know what I mean? And I, I could play D. I was fast, but like, I was terrible. I, I would, you know, hawk a guy full court, steal the ball, you know, jump in the passing lane, steal the ball, run down, race down. And I'm talking about like, you remember the ball from Along Came Polly? How he was shooting Rain Man? And yes, yes, That's how yes. my layups would hit the backboard, dog. Hard, was, like, break off, bang. <laughs> trash, yo. They used to tease me and laugh at me all the time, man. But you because, had the speed and the steals, but you would get there and just... Oh, uh, dog, dog. It was ain't a, know how to slow down the mess. Yeah, it was about a 30% chance of me making that layup. So I, was, I, was, I wasn't that good. So, but what I did and, was and I would practice. Was 12, 13, and that was around 12, 13 years yeah, old? Yeah, 12, 13 is when I, when, I, when I started playing. So, wow. yeah, man, I started late. I wish I would have started early. So, you know, um, I, I wanted to, I loved it, and I wanted to get better. So what I would do is I would practice with my team, and then I would press stay and practice with the older team afterwards. So, you know, Cal, Calvin Lewis, who was coaching our, our, our Waterview rec team at the time, would allow me to practice with the older team afterwards. And just practicing with those guys, learning from those guys, you know, eventually I would, you know, continue, continue and gradually get better. And then I, uh, you know, I met uh, John Hernett uh, when I started playing down in Sunny Hill Future League and things like that. And I started going to his workouts on, you know, on Saturday nights. Uh, you know, a lot of my friends would go down, go down South Street and hang out. And, you know, I, I would go to the gym, you know what I mean? And there would be times where, I would only be able to do the drills and I couldn't play in the games because I just, I wasn't good enough. You know, Al Williams, John Haynes, you know, yeah. all those guys out there getting it in. And, you know, I just had to wait my turn. And, you know, it was, it was cool. You know what I mean? I, I wanted to play, but I understood that I had to, I had to wait my turn. It was a pecking order. But as soon as one of them got tired or tapped out, you know, I was the first person out, John, let me get in, let me get in, let me get in. <laughs> and, you know, at that time, and this is crazy because I think it's a little bit different nowadays is, everybody don't, didn't get to play, you know what I mean? So when you got your opportunity, especially playing with the older guys, you, you weren't allowed to get out there and, and mess up mm -hmm. or you wasn't going to play. And they mm -hmm. was going to sit you that young boy, you got get out of here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I knew my job was to play defense, get them the ball, and when I'm open and they pass it to me, better make it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or get it to somebody that's going to make it. Yeah. So, you know, after doing that, uh, you know, and then I just started to gradually get better. You know, I was playing in, uh, you know, the uh, Total Response League, you know, run by Kevin, Kevin Abdul Rahman. You know, he's a great guy. And he's the one who got me, you know, connected to having some friends. Okay. So, you know, I was, uh, I was, you know, I had finished my, my freshman year at Germantown. You know, I was playing JV football at the time. I got injured in practice. Uh, you know, I hurt my knee a little bit. Um, so I missed the varsity tryouts. Uh, tried out for JV at, at Germantown High, and you know they this was ninth grade. Yeah, this is ninth grade at Germantown High School. So I played in middle school. I played at Clarence. I cl played at Clarence. Uh, he picked it up on Wayne Avenue. Um, I think it's a charter school now. But I, I played with. I played on that team in, in uh, middle school. Then I went to Germantown after that. And my freshman year, I, I played rec league. You know, because like I said, I got injured. Um, I went to try out for the JV team. Now I'm from I'm from you know Germantown I'm from the place they call the Alkies you know I'm from the Alkies and the Alkies is between Haines Street and Brickyard so we right in the middle between those two and I was on a team with about with four cats from up you know from up by Mallory up up, up top of Hawkins 
and I didn't get the ball. I just ran up and down the court, and they iced me out. You know, it was, they played buddy ball. You know, it, it is what it is. So coach cut me. I went to the varsity coach. was like, yo, let me, can I try out? He was like, nah, we already got our team to try out. Cool. So I, I play rec league. I play in the Belfield Re Recreation League that, 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 that winter. Um, summer rolls around. I'm playing Total Response League. And, you know, Kev comes up. You know, I'm working the books for Kev. I'm doing the books. And he's like, yo, how are you doing school? And I'm like, eh, you know, I did all right. He goes, what's all right? And I was like, well, I got all A's and I got a B in French. You know, and Kev's like, all right. He's like, man, you crazy? That's fantastic. Like, yes. Yeah. No, nah, we 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 gonna try to get you know we are gonna try to get you up in the school you know what I mean and during that summer you know David Fields we got, you know everybody know him as Chewy in Philly you know he was working the books as well and Chewy had went to Abington France so I talked to him about it and, and things like that and then you know we went out we took the test and we tried a couple 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 different schools but you know Abington France was just it, it just felt more welcoming for me mm -hmm. you know. Um, being from where I came from, you know, the headmaster at the time, Bruce Stewart and, um, you know, Carol Frieder, uh, they, they made me feel at home, you know what I mean? And they were warm and welcoming and, and inviting. And, and it just felt like the, it was, the, it was, a, it was going to be a good spot for me. So, and it, was this from a, like a, just from an academic perspective or, or yeah, yeah. Just to, you, did, you, did you have your mind set on trying to play basketball or what? Um, yeah. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna play, you, you know what I mean? There was no doubt in my mind that I was, I was going to play basketball. Like I love basketball. Mm -hmm. I was going to do that. But, you know, academically, you know, it was just a better, a better situation for me. You know what I mean? It was, it was one of the earliest, you know, life changing decisions that I had to make was going there because if, if I don't go there, I probably don't end up at Penn. Yeah. And, you know, uh, you know, and that, that's later in the story, but mm -hmm. so, you know, I, I go there and uh, it's, it's rough at first, you know I mean? It's, it's, I'm in a new environment. Um, there's about, you know, I think 1,200 people in the entire school from pre-K to, you know, uh, to um, 12th grade at the time. There's like maybe seven or eight people that look like me in the high school, maybe 12 and 15 to, in the whole school. You know, so it's a it's a culture shock for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I, the only white people I knew were the teachers, you know, the doctors that, that worked at the clinic that we went to and the police. You know, mm -hmm. that, that makes it, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, going out there was a culture shock for me um, to doing that. And then, you know, um, and I gradually got accustomed to it, you know what I mean? And uh, was able to do okay there. Um, so, you know, we won four. I was able to win. We were able to win four, you know, four uh, uh, Friends League championships, you know, which was, which was awesome. Uh, my freshman, my freshman year there, you know, I, I played, JV and varsity. Okay. You, know, you could play. You could play up and down, and you could only play four quarters. So okay. I would split two and two. Two and two, and exactly. Yeah. 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 So I would play my two quarters of JV, and then early in the year, like I wouldn't play varsity at all. So it's like, yo, let me get some more. Let me get some more quarters in JV if you ain't gonna play me in varsity. Right. You know what I mean? But I, you know, I had to stick with it, and you know, started ended up starting a couple games my freshman year, and then uh, my sophomore year, you know, the ball was in my hand. And, you know, I was able to to, be, to get coached by, you know, Steve Chowen, uh, you know, Mike McCabe, uh, Brian Schiff, you know, three guys that were, you know, integral in, in, in my development as well, you know, and, and they allowed me to grow as a player and, and, and as a person. Hey, so, real quick, real quick, yep. pause there real quick. Pause there for a second. You talk about your sophomore year. Just pause there. Yep. I want to go back real quick because this is, it, this is mind-boggling, bro. What I'm sitting here thinking about is, a few minutes ago, you said you only started playing basketball at 12 years old. Yep. You know what I mean? A couple, couple years prior to this. Now, you're talking about, like, the ball's in your hand now. And so what what happened? You know, you were a late bloomer. I guess they yep. maybe, maybe call it a late bloomer. Yeah. So what happened in those few years, man? Or what, what was the hunger inside? What was the motivation? How much work did you put in to go from there to there in such a short amount of time? Yeah, um... And, and then ultimately a Division One athlete. So put yeah, ex I, explain it, man. Yeah, I, I, I love the game. You know what I mean. And I wanted to get better. You know, and I was around. You know, I had you know like, you know, like I said, John Hings, Alvin Williams. You know, those guys played for the older team. Uh, I played for the younger team, and just watching those guys get down and watching the guys that they played against. 
you know, because I, I think also you had to be, uh, I was a student of the game. So I wanted to learn and I wanted to get better. Like I, I, I didn't want to be the guy that nobody wanted to pick. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't, want, I didn't like having the name Michael Jordan and not being good at basketball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got you. So, you know, I, I, I had to work. Mm -hmm. And spent countless hours working on my skills, you know, working on the fundamentals and, and, and trying to get better. You know, I was always a competitor. So I think that's that's one thing that that, that helped me out, you know, uh, and then like, I, I wanted to be better than everybody else. You know, and if you were ranked, then I, I wanted to I, you had to show me every night. And, you know, and it all started with, you know, just practice, 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 practice. Like I said, I practice with my team. I would practice with the older team. I would go and watch the older guys play. And after we were done practicing, you know, I would ask them, yo, show me, show me this, show me, show me how you do that. You know, um, you know, so I started working out down, you know, with John Harnett and he had pros, he had college guys, he had overseas, you know, overseas pros and, you know, some of the top high school guys down there playing. And I was able to, you know, because I played for John, I was able to come to those workouts, which were, which were great. Cause I learned so much from, you know, Aaron McKee, you know, uh, Eddie Jones, you know, you know, as I got older, when he went to Temple and would come down. But Aaron, you know, Aaron was John's guy since since Aaron was at Gratz, you know. So yeah. being able to learn and watch from them guys, you know, it was just it was just amazing, man. Yeah. So was it, I guess you're saying, like, just your peer group and everything, it just kind of sped up your progress? And... Yeah, yeah, man. I, and I was friends with a lot of guys that were good, you know. And <laughs> okay. so it was like, yo, I got to I got to get in the gym. No you know what I mean? I don't want to be the weak link of the group. You know what I mean? No I got to get that, the gym. That, that, that's a great segue into my next question thing I was thinking about. At what point did you realize, hey, I'm, 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 I'm pretty good. Like, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm coming along. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the weak link anymore. When did you start to realize that about yourself? Um, you, you know, I, I don't think I, I ever, ever realized that. You know what I mean? Like, I guess I realized it when other people started saying it. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. never thought that I was this or that. But you start to realize when other people start talking about talking yeah. about it and saying saying you are. You know what I mean? I think that's when you kind of realize it, when, when other people are like, yo, you, you know, you, you've got better. You've gotten better. You know, you kind of feel it. Like, I couldn't go left. All of a sudden, I can go left. All of a sudden, I can make left-hand layups. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my jumper's getting better. So you, you kind of feel it, but you don't really – doesn't really hit home until other people start to acknowledge it, you know, your peers and, and, and the coaches, but, you know, and they give you, they give you the ball, you know, and they, they start allowing you to do more things. I think that's when I found, probably realized when I was able to, when my coaches started to allow me to do more and started yeah. to put the ball in my hand, gotcha. you know, needed a bucket or, or a play, or we needed a stop. Yo, MJ, you got him. You, you go yeah. out there and you guard him. And, and and get us to stop and things like that. I think that's when it started started to really hit home. Gotcha. And for um, and we're, we're gonna we're gonna pick up you know talking about your high school career. But I yep. just want to kind of fill in a couple gaps first. Want to want to put your game in perspective. Um, for the, for the young kids that didn't see you playing, describe your game. What type of player were you? What were your strengths and all that? And then uh, also, how, how, kids don't know how tall how tall are you and all that. I'm I'm six foot on a good day. You know, uh -huh. five eleven three quarters. So you know, give me my give me my other quarter inch, six feet That's on a right. good day. That's right. We got we got to round up. We got to yeah up. yeah yeah yeah. So give me my six feet. I'm I'm about six feet. Um, and I'll say my strengths were, um, you know, I was very I was very competitive and 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 defensively I was I was really good defensively. You know, I uh, think I was known as a defender. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, my job, you know, for a lot of the teams I played on was to guard the best player and pick up whoever I was guarding 94 feet and harass the hell out of them until they uh -huh. retired, you know. Um, so I would say uh, smart, you know, a smart player. Um, you know, I wasn't really a super athletic, you know, but I was I was fast and, and physical and strong. So I would say uh, people say I'm a, a smart player, I'm solid, you know, a guy you can depend on to make good decisions and things like that. Um, but, you know, I, I just think uh, overall a, a very solid, solid player and a, a very good defender. No doubt. No doubt. All right. So we can do one of two things. We can talk about some summer league stuff and all that, or we could just continue, you know, talking about your, um, you know, picking up from your sophomore year and just wrap out and talk, you know, continue talking about high school. All right. I'll finish that. And then we'll go into the, the summer. So uh, yeah. sophomore year, um, the senior guard that was in front of me, you know, um, Dame, he he had graduated, so now it's just 
it's me, Reggie Johnson, you know, pretty much in, in the backcourt. Um, and Coach Talon, you know, gave me the ball. And, uh, you know, we just took off from there. My backcourt mate at the time, uh, Reggie Johnson, uh, you know, Lamar was a freshman at the time. Um, and, you know, we, we were we were good, you know what I mean? We were we were bombing the, the Friends League at that time. And I don't, I don't think we lost many – too many games. You might have not want lost any games, you know, during that during that uh during that three year, you know, span. And it was, is it the same friends league that, that I'm familiar with today? Yeah, yeah, same okay. friends league. They added a couple extra teams like uh towards the end of, of my uh towards the end of like my senior year, I think they was when they added Academy of New Church. And now, you know, they, they added I think Shipley and, and somebody okay. else is, is in there. Okay. But it's, it's the same league. So yeah, was, was West Town still in West Town was still yeah, yeah. We used okay. to bomb West Town though. So we, we, <laughs> no we, doubt. Yeah, we used to bomb everybody back back then, you know. What I mean? No doubt. They didn't they didn't have the players back then that they have now. So Yeah. You know, um but yeah, man, we, we ran, you know, we ran through the Friends League. Uh you know, we were able to get four championships. Um Wow. And, and then that you know, uh and then I, I started getting a little bit of recruitment. So during that time I was playing you know, down Sunny Hill League, uh, started playing with the Sunny Hill All Stars, and and that team was was crazy. You know what I mean? I think everybody, you know, we had all D one players on that team. Uh, you know, Cole went to the league. You know, obviously right out of high school. And, so and where, and where, and where was this league at? This is like a league, this, like a summer league. No, I see. This was uh, so in the summer times I would play for in the Total Response League up in uh, you know that was up in the, in the Germantown area, up in Mount Airy, Germantown area. Um, by this time, I think it had moved to Finley. Finley Recreation Center. Um, so we would play play in that. And then we would also play down in Sunny Hill League. So the Sunny Hill League at the time was like, this is, you got to understand, this is when, you know, Philly basketball was at, at its height. You know what yes. I mean? Yes, yes. So we, we all started playing developmental. And, you know, it's each Germantown, Montgomery County, West Philly, North Philly, South Philly, you know, Northwest. Everybody's got their, you know, their neighborhood teams. So we're, we all compete against each other. And then when this, you know, uh, they used to have a future stars tournament and they used to have that at temple, you know, okay. this is like, you know, before AAU got all, all big, you know what I mean? Future stars was, was that deal. You know what yes. I mean? Like BABC would come down, Scooney Penn, you know, Randall Jackson, all them dudes used to come down. Aggie McCray, them guys would come down. Uh, Gardner Road would come up. That was AI squad. You know, wow. Tony Rutledge, I remember Tony Rutledge was from, from there, you know, so uh, Baltimore would bring up a bunch of teams, Charm City, you know, Lashante Rogers, all of them. So a bunch of teams from, you know, Delaware would bring up teams. So teams from, from the surrounding areas would come up and we will all compete. So Sunny Hill had a freshman all-star team, sophomores, juniors, seniors. And so we competed in, in that zone. You, you got to understand, when we competed in that zone. We competing against seniors, you know what I mean? We're not playing just against guys our age. You know, we playing against, you know, Rosh Wallace and all, all those guys, you know what I'm saying? So real so, quick, put in perspective, who, yep. who who are some of your teammates, man? This is this is good stuff right here, man. Yeah, so uh, on the, on the All Star team, you know, we had it was myself, you know, we had Kobe, uh, you know, Abdul Collier, uh, we played at Plymouth White Marsh. Yes, um, yes. You know, Petrick Sanders, uh, Chucky Moore, Julius Williams, you know, who played at Germantown Academy and then went over went over to Drexel, uh, Brian Corsi, who played at you know Drexel. Um, who else? Uh, man, it was a bunch of dudes. I don't, I don't forget. Uh, David Braithwaite was from Atlantic City. You know what I mean? So he played with the, he played with West Philly. But you know, when we all came together, we kind of like formed Voltron. You know what I mean? So no doubt, that no was, doubt. you know, and and we just had we had a really good team. But you know, our freshman year, we were still babies. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know, we we got rocked a little bit. You, you know what I mean? Down there because we were playing against some 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 dogs. You know what I mean? These guys were no, good. It was, it, there was no like AAU. There was no fifteen. No, no, we're not years. playing against. Y'all was, was just in the league. Y'all was just playing, or y'all wasn't. We and yeah, playing against much, seniors yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no, there's no divisions or none. Of, no, you just out there. You know what I mean? So, you know that 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 was that was fun, man. You know, getting to play against all the all that talent. You, you know what I mean? And. You know, sophomore freshman year, you know, sophomore year we, we, we didn't win it. And then junior senior year we won it. You know what I mean? And we won Concha Hawk and those back to back also. So those were those were good years for us. But, you know, playing down the hill and then playing and playing because everybody played in total response, everybody played down the hill. You know what I mean? So it was against the same guys all the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the rivalries, you know, were 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 heavy. You know, you know what I mean? Like some of my favorite games was playing against South Philly. I ain't gonna even front. You know, because you had you had Donnie, you had Yah, 
you had, you know, Rashid Bay, Sewell, yes. you know I mean? Vic Thomas. You know what I mean? Then, then they had a squad, you know what I mean? And they also had an entourage, you, you know what I'm saying? So when South Philly came in the building, they had about, about 25, 30 dudes with them, you know what I mean? And because they was, I think it was Donnie's people, so they was coming, you know what I mean? And they, they would come and they, they sit on right on, they'd be right there on the corner and they heckle you all game. You, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, and, and that's another thing, like them dudes, like, uh, they used to talk mad, mad shit to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, they also would tell me, like, yo, MJ, we respect your game. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's kind of how you know also when you arrive is when, when you get love from from the other other neighborhoods, you know, other neighborhoods, like the entourages that come to the game. and, and, yeah. and like and, after the game, like giving you that. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You did your yeah, thing, for young sure, boy. For sure, yeah. for sure. You know, because they, they say, you know, uh, MJ, we, you know, we, we appreciate you know, we respect your game. You know what I mean? Yeah, they killing yeah, me during yeah. the game, but after the game, <laughs> you know, it was all love. Hey, what, what, so it, it, what, what are some memories? Like, if you close your eyes and just kind of like, are there any particular games you remember or just like like some some amazing things that happened during those those Sun Hill League, league days? Um, Yeah, man, it was... It, I mean, because it, it's always those times. Like, yeah, I remember this one time with such and such, you know? Yeah, man, you know what sticks out to me, man? I, and I tell this story to, to my players. Uh... I had thrown Larry Kettner and Ali Eat one day. Uh, we were playing down down McGonagall Hall, you know. Oh wait, uh, so you, threw, you say you threw Larry Kettner a oop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I threw Larry a oop, right? Uh, hey, you know. real quick, real quick, pause that. I just want to shout yep. out the legends, man. We got we got we got Ao in the building, and uh, my man Rashid Brooklyn Burrow was in the building. Got to shout the legends out, man. Appreciate yeah, for sure, for sure. Ao Ao and Rosh again, guys. I I played against a lot. You know what I mean? Ao would try to. Try to try to shake shake and bake, you know what I mean? But I, sure. I played play AU with Raj and, and 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 I watched Raj just destroy some of the the top ranked players, you know what I mean? And he and when he was on here, you know, he said he, you know he didn't know he was going like in, in my eyes, I was like, yo, this dude's going to the league. Like, he's <laughs> crushing. Like I'm watching him give 35, 40 consistently to all these top names, you know what I mean? Yes, so yes, yes. you know, just and, and they say iron sharpens sharpens iron. Yes. You know, just playing with and against all them dudes, mm -hmm. you know, helped me to become a better player. You That's know right. what I'm saying? And we were all, like, once we, between those lines, it was, we wasn't cool. You know, mm -hmm. we, we was, it was, we was doing whatever we could to get the win. You know, we wasn't going to do nothing to hurt or injure one another, but we was playing hard, you know, and I didn't know you. But after the game, it was all, it was all love again, you know, but yeah. during the game, it was, you know, it was it was war. You it know, was man? war. Yeah. So, so you so you so you were saying that one member you said uh you you, you remember throwing yeah, up, yeah. you so, Larry Kettner. You know, Larry Kettner, you know, R. I. P. Larry. Um, you know, we playing for John Harnett at the time and I was playing Future League, but you know, I was playing Future League and high school. So Future League was ninth and tenth and high school league was eleven and twelve. So I was playing both. You know, I would I would go up and down like I did in J V, you know, and, and, and varsity in high school. Um so I'm playing for John Harnett, you know, R. I. P. John and we on we we coming down and I throw Larry a alley you you know what I mean, and Larry smoked it. John calls timeout. You know we in the huddle, and he smacked the mess out of me in the back of my head with a he had a UMass championship ring, <laughs> Bop, right in my head. I'm like ah, you know like John what's up, and he's like what, what are you doing? I said no I didn't miss it. Larry did hit me again. Bow who threw it. <laughs> You're right, John. I looked at last. I ain't throwing you no more alley oops, though. You getting bounce passes for the rest of the night. You know what I'm saying? But you know that's that's how we were coached. You, you know what I'm saying? And and I didn't think anything of it. You know, at the time, I was just like, all right, okay, Larry, hey, Larry I ain't throwing you no more alley oops. You know what I'm saying? You, that's it. You're not getting no more alley oops from me. You know. But I, I would say uh, a lot of memories are of McGonagall Hall. You know, being packed. Yes. For for Sunny Hill games every day of the week you know what i mean and just you know being down there playing playing for the uh you know playing in the future league and staying and watching the older guys play and just learning and soaking up all the information you know um it, it just sticks out and and then uh you know just just the guys that i played with i played with some very very good talented you know individuals which yeah, made who, my job who, easy. Who were who some of the other um, just faces? Like when you when you would watch those uh, Future Star games, I mean, uh, you know, like the older guys' games and all. Just, I mean, 
Describe the atmosphere, man, and just some, uh, of, some, some of the other names that you remember. Yeah, the, the, at the, the atmosphere was crazy. You got you got to realize, like, okay, so you got you know Al and them. Al was playing. Al Williams was playing. Big Mark Jackson, uh, you know Turk Mott, um, Rashid Wallace, uh, F Meatball Faranhan, you know um, Sean Colson, uh, Cat, you know Cat Mobley, um, uh, you know Nardi was a little older than Nard Stewart, you know just uh, Rondell Turner. You know, bump watching those guys. Uh, like uh, I think somebody had mentioned Lawrence Pembroke. You know, watching that, watching, watching all those guys. Kev Slaughter. You know, my OG Kev Slaughter. Um, just watching all them dudes play, man, and get busy. You know, I mean, those are the dudes that I that I you know knew Arnold. You know, those are the guys. Joey Newton. You know, those looking up, looking up, watching those guys play is like, yo. You know, what I mean, like I, I that's I, I want that type of you know I want I want to be on that level. Yeah, and to to watch them and learn from them and then and compete with them all at the same time, you know, I, uh, I was blessed to to be able to grow up in that in that era and be around all those good players. You know what I mean? T Stokes, uh, you know, Reds. You know what I mean? Like playing against those guys. You know, Levan Austin. You know, playing against those guys. You know, only helped me get better. Yeah. Wh who who were who were some of the um toughest matchups and you know some of the toughest players that you went up like kind of went head to head uh, head to head with you think. Um, I, I would say a, a lot of the older guys were, were always tough matchups just because they knew more, more tricks. You, you know what I mean? Stuff that I, I, I do to my players now when we play, you know what I mean? You, you know, and they knew, they knew just knew more, more, more about the game, more tricks, things like that. But, um, you know, uh, Broken Ball, Donnie, uh, Yah, Kobe, obviously, um, John Lenahan, you know, Mr. 94 feet himself. You yes, know what I'm saying? That's right. You know, John, when John John's guard, you just let the two guard bring it up and you, you, you go play the <laughs> wink that game because you don't feel like dealing with that dealing with that headache, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I, I played against so many uh good players, you know, and, and I don't want to leave anybody out. You know, Terrell Stokes, you know, uh, Rez was always, you know, Rez was an old head that, you know, Rez was one of the he like Ric Flair, you know, mm -hmm. one of the dirtiest players in the business, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so Rez would do a lot of the cheap stuff, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So things like you learn, you learn how to combat them. You start doing them yourself, uh -huh. you know? And uh, so it was a lot of tough, a lot of tough players in Philly and outside. But, you know, Philly alone just has so many tough players, you know, like playing against Al when he was at, you know, uh, Germantown Academy. I just remember him. He gave us, you know, and this is my freshman year, and he still tried to say he did this to me, but I ain't really get in that game. But, uh, you know, he gave us, like, 35, 20, and 15. You, you know what I mean? Like, just destroyed us, dog. And it, it, he's, uh, to this day, he still says he gave he, he cooked me, but I, I didn't play that <laughs> game. That was all red, you know what I mean? No doubt. <laughs> hey, what, what if, I mean, what do you think is the, what are some differences, differences, similarities in like in which you describe like those Sunny Hill League days down McGonagall and then now, you know, like, you know, and, and then you ain't even talk about like, like the playground ball, just pick up. Yeah, things, yeah, you know, you know, yeah, man, uh, you know, the playground, we used to play on the playground all the time, you know, Sunday mm -hmm. mornings I would, uh, my, you know, my, uh, my, my uncle would take me up, you know, to play with the old heads on Sunday mornings up at Mallory, you know what I mean? And that's that's another spot where I learn, you know, how to play because the old heads ain't gonna let you get out there and do no crazy stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're gonna sit you down, they're gonna slap you upside your head, you know what I mean, they're gonna curse you out, and they ain't gonna let you play. So, you know, and and, and that experience alone, you know, also helped. But to get back to, to, to what you were saying, and I got sidetracked, um, can you repeat that again? Oh, just uh, just uh, any any differences in oh the like, differences the now, playground yeah, and the I think, leagues I think and everything because you know yeah, AU, they, AU, you know AU is pretty much just taking over everything yeah and, yeah you know. and this and you know these the, the thing about it was and, and I, I I try to explain this to a lot of a lot of a lot of guys now is nowadays you you everybody plays you know what I mean it's it's everybody plays and you're gonna play seven games a day you know obviously i'm exaggerating but you're gonna play four games mm -hmm. so it's like eh, i'll i'll save it yeah for the third yeah. game I was, you, uh -huh. you know what i'm saying and i find it that the kids don't play as hard as they can all the time uh -huh. and i see uh, like the guys there are a lot of guys that play hard now and it's like a skill whereas you know when we when we were doing it it, it 
everybody did. Everybody played hard. Because if you didn't, you got rolled. You, you know right. what I mean? That's right. And and I think I think we we live in a time now where nobody wants to be disliked. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody wants to be liked. And I think, you know, when we played, you didn't care if if, if they liked you or not. You, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, you know, we I've had players on our team that I've had to talk to, you know, just about, you know, like, yo, you can't allow certain things to go on. And he, you know, he kind of was like, yeah, I know, but, you know, I don't, I don't want them to dislike me. Yeah. I'm like, yo, if I, I didn't care, you know, I think a lot of the guys from my era, and I don't want to sound like a hating old head, you know, because I'm, I'm not hating on, on the new generation at all. You know, I think they do a lot of good things, but I, I just think the, 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 the competitiveness you know, it is not there. You know that 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 was there. You know during that time when we played because, you know we, man John. You know John Harnett used to tell a story. We up Concha Hawking. You know and Concha Hawking used to be during the live period. Yeah. So every coach who was a coach was packed in that low ass gym, watching that Concha Hawking tournament. And you know John. It was funny because John always had always told a story about me being crazy. You know like that a little crazy, a little crazy month over there. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I dove on the floor to get a loose ball. Uh -huh. right? And so I don't remember who it was. We were on the floor wrestling for it. And <laughs> I end up getting it. And I throw it out. And my man is like holding me down so I can't get up. And I bit that motherfucker, man. <laughs> it got me so I can, you know, so I got so I could get back up and shit. And I didn't think nobody saw but John saw that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, you know, like it was just a different type mentality, I think, back then. You, you know what I'm saying? And, oh, I think it's a, and, and, you know, times change. And you have to change with the times. But I think uh, the first thing I look for when I'm going out and watching these games is, you know, how hard is this guy playing? Because, you know, and I don't want to coach effort. If I'm coaching effort, then I, I'm not getting you better as a player if I have to yell at you to run back, yell at you to play defense, yell at you to box out, yell at you to rebound then I can't coach, you know, basketball. And I, I want to coach basketball. So, you know, I think that's the main difference, man. You know, because they, these guys are super talented. Yeah, yeah. But they don't always play hard. And, gotcha. and that, that that irks me, you know. Dump, yeah. dump my, Dump would say, it frosts my preserves, you know. Yeah, and yeah. That really eats at me, you know, when, I, when I'm watching guys play and, and they're not going as hard as they can. You know, you got to go as hard as you can for as long as you can. That's you right. Know? And, and I, I don't see that all the time whereas yeah. when we were playing it was you had to bring it or you got rolled that's right <laughs> hey real quick before we transition because there's, there's a few uh, other things i just wanted you to um explain just about your high school career to yep. kind of you know put that you know put that in perspective but real quick man what i mean an individual I, you know i got rest his soul i wish he was here so i can hear from him a legend man you know you keep mentioning hardnet you just you keep mentioning john hardnet for kids that are tuned in right now let, let let the people know who John Hardnett was, what he meant to the city, what he did, and just what he was all about back then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, John, man, John, John was doing it for the right reasons. You know what I mean? He was doing it for the for the kids. You know, and um, and guys like myself, you know, guys like Aaron McKee, um, you know, we grew up. You know, Alvin Alvin Williams. You know, John Haynes. We grew up under under john you, you know what i'm saying and he was and, like was he a, a trainer or coach john or john john or used to run john was a trainer of, of sorts you know um but you know john was like a father figure for a lot of us as well you know what i'm saying he he would make sure we were okay um and he did it a lot through basketball you, you know what i'm saying so john was able to reach a lot of people through basketball and he was able to help a lot of people you know, get out of certain situations through basketball. And, you know, he was he was coaching the Germantown, you know, uh, he was like the head guy at the Germantown section of the Sunny Hill League. Um, and he also would run his workouts, you know, on the side. So he would run his workouts uh, and he wouldn't charge the kids. Uh, he wouldn't charge the college players. If you were professional, then, you know, he would charge your, your agent would pay him a fee for uh -huh. you to come down there and work out. Yeah. Um, but he never charged any kids. He never charged any of the high school guys, any of the college guys. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, for, for me, he was like a, a father figure as well. You know what I mean? He was somebody that, you know, I, I confided in, somebody that I trusted, you know, that, that and we all trusted him. 
And, you know, he did a lot for the city. You know what I mean? And when he passed, you know, it, it hurt. And it, and I think it hurt the, the, the basketball culture in the city as well because everybody came through John, you know, through Harnett's workouts. You know what I mean? And him and Mr. Douglas, you know, Fred Douglas, they, they had it, you know, they had that thing rolling, man. And everybody who was who was anybody was was down there, you, you know what I'm saying. And it was it was something special, you know. It was something special, and you know I'm very grateful that I was able to be a part of that because, you know, a lot of players, you know, came through there, and a lot of players couldn't come through there either. You know what I'm <laughs> so, you know, and then there was a lot of NBA guys that came down to work out. They got dealt with. Yeah, you, you know yeah. what I'm saying. So, you know, it was like you had you had to bring it. You, you know what I mean, and. And uh, you know, John John was John was a good dude. You know, he had a good heart. And uh, you know, he, he he just did a lot for a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I think uh, you know, he, he allowed me to bring, you know, my a couple of my pen teammates down to the workouts, which I think helped us become better players and which ultimately led to us winning, you know, two Ivy League championships, you know. So, you know, I, I really appreciate that because we would go down there, we would play, you know, we would do the drills. You know, we play some one-on-one -on -one full – depending on numbers, we play one-on-one -on -one full court. You know what I mean? Um, we play three-on-three -three half court. We play three-on-three -three all jumpers half court. And so you, you had no choice but to get better, you know. And it was all – it was nothing but killers down there. You know what yeah. I mean? Everybody, you know, every – you know, I just, you know, from, from – I just remember, like, you know, I, I play against some of our guys and the big guys, and, and they like, man, I can't post you up. And I, and I tell them all the time, it's because Rick Brunson – used to terrorize me at Harnett's, you know, Al, all those guys, all the big guards used to back me down and talk, you know, talk greasy to me uh -huh. to the point where I, I had to get better so that I couldn't allow it. So that's right. That, you, there's no way you're going to post me up. You know what I mean? I'm going to fight, kick, scratch, claw, bite, do whatever I got to do. <laughs> so you don't get that position. And then when you do finally get it, you're going to be so tired from fighting me that you just going to pass the ball. That's you, right. you know what I'm saying? So that's that's how, you know, that's how it was, you know. And then and then a lot of players came through there. And then guys would, would come back and, and talk to us also. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't just basketball. It was about, you know, and John would always say, you know, not, not only be a good basketball player, but you need to be a good person. You know uh -huh. what I mean? He wanted us to all be, you know, good people. That's right. Uh, before I transition back at the high school, I just want to shout out another legend. We got Frankfurt in the building. We got Lewis Leonard in the building. Shout out to the, the legend Lewis Leonard. Lou. Um, <laughs> um, so high school earlier you mentioned um, you know if there's anybody that wasn't tuned in you were part of uh, four uh, Friends League championships at yep. at, um, at Abington Friends um, at Abington Friends um, so besides the four championships man just kind of talk about you know any other experiences any big games um, uh, any you know accomplishments you know any other you know uh, member, you know memories from uh, Abington Friends yeah um, you know other than than when we would beat uh, you know, the winning the championships, I would say, was the was the was the best thing about it. Um, you know, we beat some public league schools, which was okay. which was, which was fantastic. You know, uh, because you know they always just, talk just about like non conference, just non conference, games. yeah, yeah. So we would we would play a, a pretty decent non conference schedule, and you know, uh, the friends league was was looked down upon. You know, okay. back then we didn't we didn't get to play in states. You know what I mean? And, and I wish the rules were different back then, so we could go to states and play. Um, but we didn't, and people were like, oh, you know, you you, you doing that just because you're in the Friends League. Yeah. So well, anytime we would step out of the Friends League and, and, and get a win, you know, it, it was always, it, it was it was great. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you watch the, the Jordan thing, you know, he talked about the motivation. You know, the motivation was they always say, oh, it's, it's Friends League, you know, y'all only doing that because y'all in the Friends League. So, you know, it, it was extra, you know, that was that extrinsic. Uh, motivation was 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 to always beat those guys you know what yeah. i'm saying and you know to always to to go out there and compete and show them that like no nah, it's not sweet over here you know what i mean mm -hmm. you know, like don't get it twisted that's so, right you know uh you know and jared talked about it uh one of the games that that i that i remember is you know when we uh we beat grats at grats you know that was wow yeah, oh, that yeah, was yeah, the first yeah, that was the first yeah, time they lost did, at home i did mention that yeah that was the first time they lost at home for a long in, in a long time Wow, talk like, about that game. Talk about that game. Talk, so put it in perspective. Let people know who was on the grads team and talk yeah, about uh, whatever that, you remember from that. Yeah, at that time, you know, they had Marv, you know, MOC, who was my teammate down the Sunny Hill League. You know, he he played played with John as well. 
Uh, Jared Kearse was uh, was on that team. Uh, Shanti Cooks, I remember they had him. Uh, I'm trying to think who else was on that team. I don't. I think Rel Rel had graduated, or Stokes might have been on that team. I'm not sure. I'm not 100. percent But you know, I, I just remember going down there, and everybody thinking we didn't have a chance, a snowball's chance of hell winning that game. But you know, that's why you play the games. You know, what I mean? right. I'm a competitor. I, I'm gonna play whoever you put in front of me. You know what I'm saying? And and we went out there and and we got it done. And they didn't like it. They were mad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The crowd was mad. Everybody was mad. You know, <laughs> I, a couple of our teammates were a little nervous. I'm like, yo, you don't no, nah, we go we got you good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Finish this game, we good. You know what I mean? Like don't like we gonna get back on the bus, we going home, we good. Like don't worry about it, like we good. So that was that was a that was like a, a major major accomplishment was was going down into that atmosphere and and, and into their, their their house and, and beating them down there man because uh nobody's done it you know nobody had done it until we did it in like 33 years or something 30 years or something like that so yeah that was that was a big time right hey there. the last thing about high school hey, i just want to mention real quick two things um before we uh before we transition yep. um one to you mike i forgot to mention at the top of the hour um instagram only gives us an hour so then you know we gotta end this one then end this one and get back on yeah yep. ig ig be on some some shit yeah I'm sure that I'm sure that'll change soon, but yeah. So, so once it gives me the countdown, I'll let you know. We'll end this one. I'll save no it. Doubt. We'll just pick up. Um, yep. And we'll let the viewers know. I appreciate everybody that's tuning in. At the end of the interview, um, I'm, I'm gonna have a Q and A uh, with my man MJ. I'm gonna let MJ interact with the people. So if you guys have any questions, y'all can start typing them now or just save them for the end. I'm gonna let you guys ask MJ some questions about his career, his life, and um, you know, it's gonna be be, be between you guys and him. Um, last thing I want to mention, man, before we transition. Um, last high school related thing one thing that we had special back then this was before youtube before instagram before social media espn wasn't yeah. even popping what did high we have we show. had the inquire high school sports yeah. show uh-huh yeah i remember Listen, that john i grew up you know I'm, I'm from i'm from norristown i'm a norristown eagle like i graduated in 95 i remember watching the inquire sports show saturday morning 11 o'clock and i see Michael, you, it, they did a segment on you. I'm not sure how uh -huh. many segments they did on you, but you had yep, a segment. Yep. Um, I just remember, you know, they, they were they were talking about this Abbott and Friends, um, you know, Michael Jordan and the, and the name, I'm like Michael Jordan. And then you was just on there doing your thing, man. So tell the kids, t tell the viewers about the Inquire High School Sports Show, man. Hey, that that was like one of the first the first platforms that that high school sports had in the area, and. Uh, they did a they did an excellent job, man. I, I used to wake up and watch it every every oh, week as well. That was like ESPN. Yeah, yeah, it was. And, it was and, and at thirty the time. for thirty before that was yeah, even out. Yeah, at the for time, high man. School. And then, you know, they it was funny because I think it was around the time Be Like Mike came out. Mm -hmm. So when they did the segment segment on me, they was playing some times I dream. You know, they <laughs> were playing that joint the whole time. And you know, that was a that was a great experience. That was probably like my first time. You know, doing something with TV like that, and uh, you know, it was awesome. And they did a they did a fantastic job. But like you said, like that was like the ESPN, uh, you know, uh, back then, and and everybody was on that John. You know, what I mean, yeah. they used to do features on, on on both sides of the, you and know, the, that's how, the men's that's and the women's side. That's where I first saw Dewan Wagner. Yeah, yeah. Because before man. then, there was you know, you just read the newspaper or you got the mm -hmm. Street Smith magazine, but yep. you. You didn't know who all these players were, you know, less individuals like yourself played yeah. in tournaments and stuff. But besides uh -huh. that, you didn't see them. But no, that's the first time no. I saw you was on the Inquirer High School. Hey, Show. listen, man, I used to I used to watch that drink to see who who the competition was and who exactly. I need to go at. You, you know exactly. what I mean? Like, oh, OK, you was on a high school sports show this weekend. Yeah, we play y'all. We play y'all Wednesday. All right, that's right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So. That was like a little, a little, uh, another type of, you know, another type of motivation. It was like, oh, oh, you at, he averaged thirty. Okay, all right, he ain't getting thirty on Wednesday, that's for sure. That's so, right. You know, that was that was another another good thing about that. But that was that was fun, man. That was a fun time. Yeah. Hey, well, uh, Instagram is uh, giving me the countdown. So, all what right. I'm do is, hey, all the viewers, y'all tap back in. I'm gonna end this one. Um, give me like a minute or two. I'm gonna start all a new one. There's only like 10, 10 people on that jump. Oh no, we 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 lie. We it, 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 you know that's all we need, man. You know, uh -huh, yeah, all right. <laughs> you, got, you, you, you gotta see hey, all things. Ten, all ten of y'all, make sure y'all come back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna tune out and then we go I'm, we gonna tune back in. We are gonna keep it going. We are gonna wrap it up soon. All right, bet. All right.
What's up, y'all? It's Legends Week here with Michael Jordan, Abbott and Friends, University Penn. It's part two of the interview. Um, make sure y'all tune in and stay tuned um, until the end of the interview because I'm going you know, to have a Q&A. I'm going to let the people ask MJ some questions. Um, the first hour has been crazy, man. It's been great, you know, hearing MJ relive all the, the, the memories and tell all the stories, man, about the Sunny, Sunny Hill League days and uh, all that kind of stuff, man. So uh, we're going to keep it going here. All right, so um, the first question I have, um, so back in the day, it's different. You know, it just seems like, you know, AAU has everything kind of wrapped up now. Either you're doing AAU or you with your trainer or whatever. But back then, another big thing of the, the 90s and everything was, like, camps. Like, you know, ABCD camp and all that. Did, did you participate in any camps in any, any of your years? Yeah, I, I got to uh, – I got I was invited to the ABCD camp, um, ABCD All-American camp that was in uh, – I think it was in Voorhees, New Jersey at the time. Uh-huh. And uh, it was some, some some ballers out that joint, you know, like Jermaine O'Neal, Lester Earl, Kobe, you know, and then all the older guys as well. You, you know what I mean? Uh, Steph, all those guys. Uh, Jarrett was there that year. Um, we had a, a whole Philly contingent out that joint the year that we went, and it was it was it was crazy packed out there, and it was it was hoopers from all over. I remember. Uh, Funny story from that camp with somebody from uh, out, out the Bay Area was trying to tell us that E40 was better than Biggie. You know I mean? so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we start we started calling the ball E40 all week. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was saying E40 was better than Biggie, but man, it was some it was some some good players out there, man. And and, and it was funny because all the Philly dudes we would we would go watch. We would we would we would go and watch all, you know, all of the um, all the other dudes play. Like like when, like when y'all wasn't playing, y'all yeah, we watch wasn't games. playing. We so if Jared had a game and I didn't have a game, I was going to watch his game. So we would go all go watch all, all watch each other play, and you know everybody from Philly at one point had got dunked on, <laughs> and so you know back then we were we was all clowning everybody. So if you got you know if you got dunked on or something like that, you know you you obviously if you got crossed and everything, we would clown you, but you would you still go back. You go back for more. And, you know you cross me once, you have to cross me a hundred times. You know of you got to do it all night. But everybody from Philly had got dunked on with that that week, and I was the last one. You know what I mean? Lenar Stewart, tell him about the pickup game we just recently had. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, these dudes, man, is it's crazy because everybody had got dunked on except for me. So I'm, you know, I'm clowning everybody, te teasing everybody all week. And my last game, I'm boxing my my man out. Somebody else didn't box their dude out. Shot goes. My man comes flying in, tip dunks on both of us. Right underneath the basket, all the Philly dudes right there. I'm just like, oh, I was, <laughs> yo, I was hot. I cursed that ball out, yo. I cursed him. You remember? Out. Do you remember what play? You remember who dumped it? You remember who? I don't remember who it was, but this dude was super athletic. This dude could fly, yo. He was one of the most athletic dudes in camps. I don't, I don't remember his name, but you know he he could fly, dog. You know, he punched that joint like he dunked. I was boxing my man out, so. His man got the the brunt of the, the 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 nuts on his back, you know what I'm saying? But I was I was in the I was in the picture, dog. And <laughs> so if you was a photographer there, you would have definitely been. In the oh picture. yeah, oh oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, hey, real okay. quick. So I mean, you you kind of breeze past some 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 names, man. Tell me some. Tell me again who some of the players were that you were there, and, and some of the players you may have interacted with or went up against, like some of the, that went on to be NBA players. And all uh, that. uh, you know, it was. I, I'll say like. All the dudes from my class that went uh, straight out of high school, they were all there that year, you mm -hmm. know. And then there were there were some some guys from the younger from the younger class, you know, that were there. Um, so like Jermaine O'Neal, Kobe, Tim Thomas, uh, Lester Lester Earl who pl went to play overseas. He was like top five in the country. Um, I'm trying to think who else was out there. Um, other than the, you know the Philly guys that that were all out there. Um, yeah, Steph, Steph Marbury was out there. Tim Wynn, Shaheen Holloway. Wow, they were yeah. all there. Yeah, Holloway, yeah, yeah. Dog, there? dog. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Gosh, yeah, it was you crazy. Talking about dog. the best guards yeah, in yeah. history. Yeah, yeah. It was, wow. it was, it was, it mean, was wild. You, and then all these dudes also was just, they, they would come and play, you know, 
down the down the hill in Future Stars tournament, down up in Conshohocken. You know what I mean? I think we beat, I think we beat the Road Runners, uh, Shaheen Holloway and them, and they had a. Uh, I want to do who they have, man. I think Shaheem and, and a bunch of other dudes up there. Yeah, up and, in, and, you know, Coach Sandy, Sandy Pannone, you know what the little thing is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Craig, uh huh. Uh huh. He would, he would bring all the best players oh, yeah. from oh, yeah, New Jersey. Man. All the, the best You players. know, the, the Gauchos was, was heavy back then. Gauchos and and they, they would come. Uh, who was the other other New York team that had uh, Shamel? Oh, Al, Al, Al Harrington. My man said Al Harrington. Yeah, uh-huh, Al Harrington. Al Harrington. He uh, Shamel, Shamel at, Jones. At Shamel Jones. Uh, El, I think look, Odom. Was he, was he, was he, I don't know if he was there, but like Shamel Jones, uh, Sham God. Shit, I don't forget Sham God. Oh, you know Sham I mean? God was at the ABCD as who, well? Who do we beat, Duval? Who do we beat then? Oh, he's, he's saying it wasn't the Roadrunners? Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to figure out who we beat because we we beat we beat we beat them to get to the championship. I know that. Well, I know Jared Kier said. I think J.K. said y'all played them in Concha Hockey. Yeah, yeah. We we won it back to back years. Uh huh. But uh, we had to. I think we had to play the Road Runners to get to. Oh, the Final Four. Yeah, okay. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I we played them for sure because I, I remember I played against Shaheen a lot. Wow. Wow. So did, so did did you have any battles? Who, who uh, did you? Who, what's some, some guards that you went to battle with? Um, at, at the ABC, did you remember? Uh, like Shaheen, uh, Tim Wynn, who went up to play at uh, at St. Bonaventure, another another good good guard that that was a terror. You know, he's a little dude, fast as hell. You know, with with terrorize. But you know, uh, Ed Coda. You, you know what I mean? Ed Coda. Yeah, North yeah. Carolina, right? I, yeah, I always wondered. Like, Ed Coda must have been in high school for like seven years, dog. Because I remember he was two years ahead of me, and then. We ended up graduating high school at the same time, so he must have reclassified and prepped and all that. But I'm like, yo, this, I'm like, I'm like, this, this, this dude is crazy. Yep, we definitely, uh, of course, we definitely beat beat Leron Prophet team. I remember that game. Oh, because, where at, at ABCD? No, up at at Concha Hawkins. Yo, LeBron, LeBron Prophet, he, he was on. He, was, he came with the Delaware team. Yeah, right? I, remember, I know. Yeah, LeBron I Prophet. I think Jermaine Medley was on that team too. Oh, maybe. he's got some. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Names, man. So. Hey, real quick, we, we, <laughs> hey, we, we, got, we, we got to shout out some more legends, man, before you continue. We, we got, got to go back and shout out Lenard Stewart in the building, man, tuned in. My man, Ryan Preston, man, Phil, Philly Textiles. We got Philly Textiles in the building. Ryan Preston in the building. <laughs> no doubt, man. We got hey, Marcus hey, Green Press, in the who, building. Everybody in the building. We got Marcus hey, Green. Everybody Press, who, who was killing me, Press? Tim Wynn or, or uh, Shaheen? But no, see, what happened was up in uh, – I knew we was gonna we was gonna beat Delaware because they kept talking about LeBron Prophet, LeBron Prophet, LeBron Prophet gonna do this, he gonna was do tough, that. Dog. I seen him. He was tough, man. Man, get out of here, dog. So they, <laughs> MJ, who, who he said so, that's that's press, that's press a, yo, across you off the that court. dude is a hater. That's an urban legend, man. And and, and Rashid. <laughs> Broken Ball and Andre Howard and Joe Bryan started that crap, man. I, I, we'll get into that in a second, man. And these dudes is over. These dudes were, man, they went back to Philly with this crap, man. I'm going to tell you about that story. Hold on. All right. But LeBron, they was talking all this stuff about LeBron Prophet being better than Kobe. Oh, snap. So, you know, Kobe, Kobe ate him for lunch. Where was this? At, at, at Concha Hockey? Up at Concha Hockey. Yeah, yeah. Kobe All right, ate so, so, so we, we, done, we done with ABCD? We, we done with ABCD? Yeah, we done with ABCD. All right, Concha so talk Hockey. about the other Because they, they brought Concha up LeBron Prophet. So, LeBron Prophet was getting a lot of love. And they was talking heavy about LeBron Prophet being better than Kobe. Wow. And Kobe was hot. And when I tell you, dog, just like on the, on the, the last dance, you know, he was like, okay. All right. He went out there and destroyed LeBron Prophet. And we all knew we wasn't getting the ball that game. You know what <laughs> I mean? It was, cert it was certain times where you, you just knew you wasn't going to get the rock. Uh -huh. and, and that was one of them games. And, and we, was, we, we was fine with it because we, know, we knew who the man was at the time. Of course, of course. And, and our job was, th was to get that man the ball. But, you know, we, we knew, we knew hey, about it. Y'all were juniors then? Yeah, we were juniors. We wanted our junior and senior year. Oh, okay. see, y'all won back to back at the time. Yeah, field. yeah, yeah, man. We, I mean, we had we had the best player in the, in the country. You know, you know, one of the, one of the best to ever do it. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And, and he was like that back then. You know what I'm saying? Like I seen the ball like destroy NBA guys that would come back to work out, and he would just cooking them. That's when I knew I was like, yeah, he going straight to the league, dog. He, wow, you know, he's gonna go straight. And to what the when y'all when y'all played the Delaware team at, at the, in Concha Hockey when y'all played them? Um, 
what was that? What what point was that? Was that Final Four? Was that a championship? Uh, game? You know, I, I, man, was just, that was just I'm, one of the games. Yeah, it was just one of the games, and uh, you know, I don't remember at what point it was. You know what I mean? But that that was that was one of the one of the um, one of just one of the games up there, man. And and like, it's just so many good players at that time in the area. You, you know what I mean? And and it, it it was it was crazy, man. It was crazy. And then playing up in Kanchi, like it, it was it's different now than it was then. Yeah. Because, like I said, every college coach in the country was in that job, packed in yes. that little in that little field house. Yeah, you know, and the court is real tight and small. Too. Tight. I remember you know that. It, it's not like it is now. I remember they had the stage was open with the with the uh -huh. fold up chairs yeah, on yeah. the stage. They yeah. had they had a fold up chairs on the uh -huh. ground. So it was it was man, it was tight in there. So, you know, you you can press the skin off of somebody back up in there too. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, you you had to you had to bring it. And to 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 win that 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 type of thing, and then you had to be mentally tough, just to be coached by the dudes that we was that we was coached by. Yes, you know what I mean. Like the halftime speeches was were incredible, man. Like, <laughs> I'm talking about we might be winning, and John will come in. You know, so we had John, you know, John Harnett, uh, Claw Gross, T Shields, uh, you know, Flint, the older Flint, not Brew, but his dad. You know what I mean? His dad was 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 crazy, you know what I'm saying? So and then Sonny Hill would come in, you know what I mean? And they would give us the business. <laughs> the, I'm talking about they would just, just yo, man, do <laughs> everything in the book, dog. And that's why I, you know, I tell them like after going through that, there was no college coach in the country that was going <laughs> that was going to say anything to me that was going that was going to bother me like, you know what give I'm me saying? give me an example what All right, so so out you? so we up in Kanchi and we we at halftime you know one game and Abdul Kayer you know is taking taking too many shots you know what I'm saying <laughs> so you know they they all you know they all yelling at us you you motherfucker that y'all so y'all soft y'all you know just giving us the business and then Sonny walks in, and Sonny goes, Abdul Collier, <laughs> who the f do you think you are, son? Do you know who that man is right there? That's Kobe Bean Bryant. <laughs> you ain't supposed to shoot the ball more than Kobe Bean. And then he looked at Abdul, and he looked at the coach, and he said, if he got a problem with that, Take his jersey and leave him in here, and he don't go out and play the second half. Wow! I said, "Damn, we all we all like this," <laughs> because you know, and Ab Abdul, that's one of my best friends. You know, to this day, you know, he always like, "Yo, nah, man, I, I, I was, I'm better. I was better than go. <laughs> I, I was supposed to be on the shot." And, and Ab, so, Ab was like a Barkley kind of like you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, man. Yeah, different man. type game. Like, listen. Man, these these halftime rants was was incredible. We could be up twenty and still yeah. get, you know, get fried. So it's like, yo, like, and, and that's that's another difference of today and now is whereas now I think they 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 always telling these kids what they want to hear and yeah. not necessarily what they need to hear. Yes, yes you know what I'm yes. saying. And I think back then they was telling us what we needed to hear, not yes. what we wanted to hear. You know what I mean? <laughs> and. Uh, and, and I think that's one of the major differences, man. Hey, real quick. Um, oh, uh, Preston said a classic slab story. Who, John? Yeah. No, no. Uh, oh, oh. Ryan said a classic slab story. Oh, he's talking about Ab. I think I think that's his nickname. Oh, okay, okay. Cla okay, got class Ab. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, real yeah. quick. Um, so so for for the, for anyone watching any you know, all, all the old heads our age, they they know what it is. But any any younger players that don't know what it is that uh, Mike Jordan's talking about, he's talking about the legendary Donner Field Classic happens up in Conshohocken every year. It's pretty much at the end of all the state tournaments. This is where everybody plays at. It, it's it's not an AU tournament. You just get a team and you, and you and you do your thing. So so in your in your um in your years there, um if you can just kind of describe because I mean there were legendary years in the nineties in Conshohocken. What were a few more players, you know, any any other teams you remember going up against there? Any other players and and just you know any 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 other Kobe stories? Because I just we, we got we got to stay here for a second, man. Yeah, man, Kanchi Kanchi was crazy because our freshman year and sophomore year, you know, the the, the Sunny Hill team had juniors and, and seniors in the league also, and they was getting busy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Point Breeze always had a good team. Kareem Towns, one of the 
one of the one of the baddest one of the baddest, baddest dudes in the in the in the in the city, you know what I mean, at the time. Uh Rab would would give you forty and, and not break a sweat. You know what I mean? He was he was one of the one of my favorite players to watch. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, I think if Rab Rab worked a little bit harder, you know, or maybe if it didn't seem so easy to him for him, you know, there's no doubt that he, he should have been in the league because that man, he was he was one of the one of the best one of the best players, you know, and the best scores that I've ever seen. Um, uh, you know, uh, it, it's it's so long ago that it's, it's it's hard to to remember. I'm hoping somebody it's almost uh, like it's almost like a blur. Yeah, I'm or, hoping somebody yeah. can you know, but like Ross Wallace, you know, Al, Mark Jackson, uh, you know, Larry Kenner, R.I.P. You know, Larry was was a stud. You, you know what I mean? He was he was a physical specimen. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it was so many players that played up there, man, and you know, like Donnie and 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 Yah and all those guys. You, you know what I mean? Like all them dudes, everybody from the, you know, from the the, the tri-state area. Yeah, that was good. You know, all played up there. there. You, you know yeah. what I mean? And and, and I don't want to you know leave anybody out. Yeah, but, but it was so many. So if anybody that's watching, you know, any of the the, the, the twenty-one people that's watching, if y'all <laughs> if y'all know. You know somebody that was up in there. By, by all means, please, please add him. You know, like I said, Kevin Slaughter, all, all those guys was playing up in there. Man, them dudes was them dudes was tough, man. No doubt. Hey, Ryan Preston, before we uh, transition, start talking about the college stuff at Penn. Um, Preston said, uh, 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 he said, tell a classic LP story about when y'all played at Gratz. Yeah, LP, LP went off. That was my that was my backcourt mate. You know, RIP. You know, another guy that we lost in, in 2020. 2020 been a rough year, man. It's uh, it's been a rough year, you know. Hopefully, get this, get this shit over with, man, because it, it's been a rough year. Um, you know, he's my high school teammate. He was a, a college teammate as well. Um, one of one of my one of my best friends growing up. And, and what's uh, his first and last name? Uh, Lamar Plummer. Oh, oh, Lamar Plummer. Of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he he was a bucket. You know what I mean? That was my backcourt mate. And the whole the, the whole grass thing was was Jared and and Mar versus Mike and LP. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, it was funny because in the summertime, Jared and LP played for Northwest okay. down in Sunny Hill League. And me and Marv played together. Marv and I played together for Germantown. So when we, when we, we, you know, when we started playing each other, you know, we played them at Gratz. It was, it was just a funny dy dynamic. But, you know, LP, LP's a bucket. You, you know what I mean? He had a silky smooth jump shot. And, you know, he, he was a bucket. You know, he scored. I, I think I scored over 1,000, but he scored. I think he might be the all-time leading scorer at AFS. You know, I mean, he he was a bucket getter, um, silky smooth jump shot, could get to the rim. Um, you know, he was really good, and 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 without him, we don't win that game for sure. Got you, got you. Hey, so um, so talk about your um, you know, it's it's interesting when I, I love talking about you know talking to like the legends that I've been talking to about the whole high school recruiting process because things are different now. Now you have kids on Instagram, you know, with their posts. I like to announce my fit, my 80th offer. Da da da. You know. It goes down on social media. Back then, you had the Nike shoe box with all your letters. You know what I mean? So just talk about what your college uh, recruitment process was like and what ultimately left, led to Penn. Yeah. Um, you know, it was it was slow early, early on. You know what I mean? Um, I got letters from everywhere. But, you know, I, I never took stock in those letters because I knew they were – they were, you know, automated letters that, yes. that you send out. They send out to everybody. Yeah, yeah. If you in Streets and Smith, you get in a letter. You, you know yeah. what I mean? If you if you, <laughs> you in that magazine, you get an automated letter because the college coaches could only, I, I believe at the time, they could only call you like one time a, a, a day or one, maybe it might have been once a week or something like that back then. Uh -huh. So they would send you a lot of letters. You know, you would yeah. get a lot of letters at the house and a lot of it was fluff. Um, but, you know, you got letters from everywhere. And then, you know, your recruitment started to pick up. And, <laughs> and then uh, so it, it started to pick up and um so my process was you know uh and and how i <laughs> how penn started recruiting me was my my high school coach uh you know steve chadwin had called coach Duncan, and and was like yo why are you not recruiting my boy you know dump was like oh he's interested and he was like well yeah you know you know what i'm saying so that's how my i got started recruiting at penn and then, you know, just from playing, like you said, it, it wasn't – it wasn't – AAU wasn't as big, you uh -huh. know what I mean? And there were a couple AAU tournaments that I did play in, and I played with uh, she, I played with Lynn Greer, Quincy Wiley, Joe Brown, Howard Brown, another uh -huh. another dude. I forgot yeah. how he played with me in down down uh, Sunny Hill, too. 
another bucket, you know. Um, so, you know, I play AAU with those guys and, you know, uh, I didn't get a whole lot of recruitment either in a because of AAU, you know what I mean? Because, you know, she was the man on our team. He got the buckets. Yeah, I played D, you know what I mean? I, I would play defense. That was my job to play defense. Um, so, you know, I played defense every once in a while. I would have a game, but, you know, I, I didn't get a whole lot, you know, early on and, um, you know, it, it really didn't matter to me. You know, at that time, I just wanted I just wanted to keep competing, keep playing. You know, you see you see the ranked players and all that, and you and you get a chance to see them, and you yeah. get a chance to go at them. You know what yeah. I mean? So, you know, I'm picking you up. Back then, I was picking you up full court, 94 feet. Everybody I played, mm -hmm. I was picking up. Except Sham God. I, I didn't pick him up full court. <laughs> no, no, no. no I, I guarded him, but he couldn't shoot. You know what I mean? He couldn't shoot. So, you know, you got to be smart sometimes. You know, a go guy can't it. shoot, and he handles the ball like he does. You don't pick him up full court. You, you kind of back up, give him space, and and you make him beat you shooting jump shots. That's you know? right. So that's you, right. as a good defender, you know that that you gotta you gotta play. You know you gotta play the percentages. And some people you just don't press up on. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. That's like John Lenahan. I ain't bringing the ball up against John. I, I'm, <laughs> you know, uh, you know uh, the, the the my little man that was from from Baltimore area. Uh, from, uh, what's his name, man? Uh, but you're not bringing the ball up against him. I'm just going to uh, pass it. Let my two guard bring it up. You know what I mean? I'm going to go right. play the wing this game. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Like, I, I don't need that. You know, uh -huh. it's just why well, go through that. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, you know, uh, and that's, this is, I'll get into that story. So we out, we playing, we playing in the tournament out in Indiana. And uh, we make it to the championship, I think. Or, or we playing on the, the last day. You know, you got to play like five games that day. And this is like our fifth game. I think we made it to the championship. And we playing against, uh, sh yeah, Sean, Sean, Shante Rogers, Shante Rogers. That's that's right. I was, I was about, I'm thinking Sean, Sean, Shante, Shante Rogers. That's the other little dude. Yeah, I ain't bringing the ball up against him. I saw Shante Rogers, dude. I think it might have been right. Rosh coming up the court went to go behind his back, and when he went to go get it, my man was going down the other end. Dawson, he, went, he went to go get it. And it wasn't there. Yeah, he went to go get it. Wasn't there because my man stole it. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I'm nah, we're not doing that. You know, you got. That's how you learn how to. And, and John taught us how to. You know, Mark Jackson open and close the gate when you bring another ball up the court. Because yes. guys like them, you can't cross. You can't put the ball in front of them and they're going to take it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they're they going to take it. So we out in Indiana. We're playing at Purdue because back then at AAU, you could play at Division One schools. Yes. I mean, they, they, it wasn't an issue. You can go play. So we, we I got to see a lot of the universities and stuff just by playing AAU. And so I'm playing in one tournament out there and we, 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 uh, we had to play like five games to get to the chip. And, you know, this is like the championship game, stiff, sore. But, you know, we got to play. And we play uh, Brooklyn, USA. I, I think that was the name of the team. They had Shamel Jones, they had Sham God, Ed Corda, you know, some a couple other guys. Pretty deep, you know, they were guard. You know, the New York guards, they, they pat the rock, you know what I'm saying? That's right, that's right. So one thing they could do, you know, back then was they all could handle that thing. You know, they all had that thing on the string. So we playing, you know, you know that – uh uh, Purdue got the elevated floor. Uh -huh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like so stage stage. We, we play out there, and 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 I, I, Sham, he did get me. He got me. But <laughs> the story that Rashid and 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 Andre Howard came back told everybody. Oh, oh, this this, this the legendary story. Yeah, yeah, Ryan yeah. Preston is talking yeah, about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So these dudes come back to Philly, man, and and tell everybody that he crossed me and I fell off the court. <laughs> You fell off the stage. Yeah, they saying I fell off the off the joint, y'all. I'm like, come on, man. Like that never happened. Them dudes is lying. Wait, wait, so wait, wait, let's break it down. So, so, so oh, he Sham, crossed me. He crossed so, me. He did get me. He got uh, we, me. We, we, we talking about Sham God? Yeah, yeah, he got me. So, so he, he got, got me. So, okay, so okay, all right, all right. It's two stories. So t talk about what happened, and then what, okay. talk about yeah, and then, yeah. then explain so, what they say. What so, they say happened. You know, I'm, I'm guarding. I'm guarding the ball. And he and he he got you know he he got that thing on the yo yo dog he be snatching <laughs> left right all this other crazy stuff you know what I'm saying, so he got me with a nice joint and that ain't the first time I got got you know I defend you know yeah, I mean, yeah. I've gotten, I mean did, I've did gotten, it get you with the legendary sham guy or, yeah, or we don't call else? we hey, we won't call that the sham guy we'll call it the Pooh Allen the Pooh Allen yeah Poo we'll Poo call Poo it the Pooh Allen from because where I'm from I've That's seen Pooh Allen That's Poo yeah Poo I've seen Jerome do that and Sham is my age so there's 100%. no way. My old head was doing it before I seen Sham do it. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. So, so, so yeah. did he hit you with the Pooh Allen or just? Something? No, no, he hit me. He hit me with a nice ass, like 
long AI type cross. No, a way out yeah. here, Joe. Yeah, yeah, it was way out there, and I swore he was going one way, and he yanked that thing back. <laughs> and I was, I was like, damn. And you, they gonna laugh because that's what they do, you know. Yeah. You know, that's 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 good for them to talk about on the way back. So, you know what I mean? And I mean, I mean did, you, did you fall? Did you fall? No, 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 no. But he, he yanked me. Like, I was over there, and he was over there. Okay. But, you know I mean? That ain't the first time, you know, or the last okay. time. You know what I mean? I got, you, defend. I got, you defend. Yeah, I you defend. defend. You know what I mean? I got I got yanked up plenty of times, you know what I'm saying? But you're going you to have to yank me again, and again, and again, and again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but so them dudes, clowns, Joe Brown, too, the clowns that they are, and, we, you know, we young at the time. <laughs> They decided they was going to tell everybody back home that he, he, he made me fall off the court. You know what I mean? And it's the elevated court. Too. So, you know what I mean? When you got three dudes telling the story, now everybody going to believe it. But no, nah, no, nah, it ain't go down like that. Well, that's the difference. See, that's the difference of then and now. Yeah. Because back back then, you just had the word of mouth. Yeah, but you had now, dudes mouth, would have had the camera phones nope, out. Nope. It would have been on YouTube. And yeah, I would have been, been on everything. You know what I mean? But, you know. But it's, it's, it's crazy, though, man, because I wish they did have that because – and Lynn Greer can attest to this, John. I, I dunked on two cats out in Vegas. Okay. I, I was trailing the break, and my man, my man, Leron Cephas from Delaware, he had threw it back to me. And I just grabbed that joint with two – I just grabbed it with one, two, and went up and was just like, yo, go hard. And I ended up dunking the joint. And if I actually knew what I was doing at the time, I would probably would have danced and celebrated, probably did the cabbage patch or the, the butterfly. The, 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 the Joe, you know? I see the Joe that you did overseas. The, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Because I knew I was going to dunk that one. This one, I didn't <laughs> even a chance to celebrate. I just ran back on deep. But our, our coach at the time, Flacco, had ran down the hallway. He was like, oh, ran out of the gym. But you know nobody nobody seen it because we didn't have the the phones out. No 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 can't, no no yeah, smartphones, so. man. But no, Sham he got me he got me with a nice joint. You know, it wasn't the first time or the last time that I got that I got you know sliced. But you know, you know what I mean, I, I right back at him. You know, right 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 back. So no you know, doubt. so then you know back to the back to the recruitment trail. Um, you know, I, I got some looks. You know, I, I got some some high major looks and mid major looks. Um, and then my, it came down to to my final five. Five schools were um, where I took my official visits was Manhattan. Fran Fraschella was there at the time. Um, Manhattan, you know, Drexel, uh, St. Joe's, Penn, and then I had a visit set up for Duquesne. Okay. You know, um, I had gotten recruited by UMass. Calipari came into my house. Uh, him and Brew, you know, came into my house at the time. But you know, they were they were good, man. You know, they just had made a run. I think they were made it to Sweet Sixteen or something like that. Yes. Yes. And you know, I knew they were recruiting Monte Mack, who was McDonald's All American. Um, I knew they were recruiting another another high high level kid from up that way. They had they had the two uh, they had the two they had the two kids from um, from uh, shit, the two Puerto Rican boys, Travieso and Padilla. Okay, you know, on that team, and yeah, they played sure. like thirty five yeah. minutes, and they were sophomores. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So I was like, yo, like I ain't coming. I'm not doing that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I, I I do have confidence in myself. Uh -huh. But I also I'm a realist, and, and you want to play. play right away. You yeah, play. I want to play. You know, what I'm, uh -huh. saying? I'm a basketball player. I want to play. If I'm not playing, I, you know, what I mean, like I ain't gonna be happy. So you know, I want to play, and I want to be able to compete for, for 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 a job. You know, what I'm saying uh, to the opportunity to play. And they played 35 minutes as sophomores, and they went to the Sweet 16. Uh -huh. He ain't playing less as juniors. You, you know, what I'm saying. So it was like, man. and there was you know, guys wasn't doing the one and done. Them guys were staying. Yeah, they was staying. Them dudes, but that. them dudes wasn't going. It was anyway, sticking around. You know I mean? So, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not doing that. And then, you know, I had called Duquesne and told them that, you know, I, I, I wasn't leaving Philly. You, you know what I mean? I had told Manhattan Duquesne that I wasn't leaving Philly. So it pretty much came down to St. Joe's, uh, Drexel, and Penn. Um, I had visited St. Joe's. Um, Rashid uh, Bay was my host at the time. You know, um, uh, I was real familiar with, the, with, with a lot of their guys, you know, because I worked out up there with John a lot. You know what I mean? I, and and um, uh, Jeff Arnold had, was was the point man on, on was recruiting me. Um, and then you know Bill Heron, Drexel. I used to go down Drexel workout. John used to hold workouts at Drexel. Uh, Penn, you know, uh, I used to go out down. I knew I knew Fran. You know, I knew Dump. Um, they were recruiting uh, Matt Lango at the time. You know, uh, I was looking at that as a possible. You know, we could be like Jerome and and Matt Maloney. You, you know what I'm uh -huh. saying? And then Jerome was my old head, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And we come from the same, you know, same area. 
Um, he went to private school. He went to Episcopal. I went to Abington Friends. So we got similar paths. Yeah. Um, I saw what he did at Penn, you know, and I was like, you know, that, that, that could be an option. And, um, you know, St. Joe's had a uh, – no, Duval, no St. Joe's bashing. Uh, <laughs> St. Joe's had uh, – you know, they recruited myself and another kid, Tim Brown, at the time. And, you know, Tim, they, they had told me during the recruiting process, you know, Jeff's my man. He was honest with me at the time, you know, the whole way. And he said, um, you know, he said, Mike, we're recruiting you and Tim Brown. You know what I mean? It's like, we're going to take one of y'all, whoever commits first. You yes, know? yes, yes, yes. And, you know, I told Jeff that I had promised, I had promised Coach Heron and I had promised Coach Dunphy I wouldn't decide mm -hmm. until I visited them. And I was yeah. visiting them the following weeks, you know. Uh -huh. And Tim Brown, I was upset. I was crazy. I was up St. Joe's working out with John. Uh, I think Kobe was in the back working out as well at the time. Um, and we had, we left. You know, I was lift, uh, you know, worked on my game. Got something to eat. Went to Larry's, got a steak, you know what I mean? Got something to eat. Got home, and Martelli had called me, you know, on, on the landline. Because ain't no cell phones called me on called the landline. Yeah. You know, on the, on the joint where you got to. That's right. That joint, That's you know right. what I mean? So uh, Martelli had called me, and he said, Mike, uh, Tim Brown, you know, called us and, and committed. We're going to take his commitment. Wow. You know, thanks thanks for, you know, letting us to recruit you. So then it came yeah. down to pretty much Drexel and Penn. Gotcha. And uh, I just felt more comfortable, you know, at, at going so to Penn. So those two, was that more kind of like an easier decision almost, you know, between um, Drexel and Penn? Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think so at, at the time. You know, I just felt more comfortable mm -hmm. at Penn, you know, at the time. Um, uh, I, I just felt like it was a better fit for me, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh, and I knew Drexel. I knew Drexel was recruiting my man Corsi, gotcha. uh, Brian Brian Corsi, and myself. We were, we played on the Sunny Hill All Star team as well, so it was like you, you know what I mean? Like I, I get a chance to go go here, you know, and 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 and, be, and try to be a part of something um, special, you know what I mean? Uh, I knew that Matt was 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 a guy that they were going to take as well, and I, I watched him play that winner in the tournament as well. And, you know, I was like, you know, man, I, I'm going to play with this dude. This, he was getting buckets, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to have me another two guard like like I had in high school, you know what I mean? Yeah. In high school, I had LP. You know, you, you need that running mate, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And in high school, I had Lamar. And then look, I looked at it as in college, I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have Matt, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, between the two, you know, and it just came down to where I felt more comfortable. And, you know, I, I thought that that pen was, was, was the right fit for me. And I, I think it was – everything happens for a reason. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I think Tim Brown signing there, you know, was, was for a reason. And me going to Penn, you know, was for a reason as well. Yeah. You know, so, I wouldn't so, have my job – I wouldn't have a job that I have today, you know, if I, if I didn't go to Penn because my boss is my backcourt mate. So. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. So, so, um, so you get to Penn – just yep. you know, break down that full experience, man. All your accomplishments, um, you know, any any adversity, you're just you know, just break yeah, down the uh, full experience. You know, I, I, and then, then also, uh, if, I yep. if, talk about all that, but just, just the first thing I want you to mention is just what was it like, just knowing that you would be playing in the legendary Palestra, and then talk about the experience. Um, you know, playing playing in the Palestra, man, was 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 awesome you know what i mean we're we're trying to get a game down there now you know versus penn so that so that our guys get to get a chance to play in the palestra because it is one of the most historic gems in the country you know what i mean and i don't think there's anything like a packed palestra you know where you can't hear anything and everything just sounds like a whistle in your ear. Yeah, yeah. you know the fans are right there they're right right on top of you and then it seats you know but it seats about eight thousand eighty five hundred you know, and, and when it's packed, it's packed, it's hot. You know, I, I don't even, I don't know if they have air in there now, but when we were playing, there was no <laughs> air. So we would be in there in the summer times getting it in. And it was like, a, you know, you you in the oven in that gym, you know what I'm saying? That's so right. it, it was one of the most historic gyms in, in, in the country. And, you know, for I think everybody should get a chance to, to play in there if they can. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because it's just it's so, so much history in that gym with Penn basketball and, you know, the big five and, and things like that. And it's so, and it's all, you know, it's all around you. You go in there and it's just, you know, it's nostalgic. Now, as far as the decision goes, going to Penn, like Penn, like to get in the, I mean, I had to take the, I had to take the, the SAT like four times, man. Wow. 
Yeah, 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 man. I, I had to take that joint like four times, man, to get in to get in the pen. So it was, you know, I, I tell people all the time when I'm recruiting them, don't be discouraged about, you know, about the test. That test is hard, you know, it, it's, it's hard, you know, and don't be discouraged about it. But I had got a 27 on my ACT, you know what I'm saying? So, and I had, you know, I had good grades. I had like a three, five or three, six, or something like that, average and friends. And I was involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. So, but it was hard to get in, you know what I mean? And then once, once I, you know, I finally got my score, you know, on the, on the SAT, it took me four times to get it and super score. I finally got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, uh, it, it was, it was, an, it was an, a, a, a AFS, I would say prepared me well for Penn. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So I was able to do well in the classroom, classroom there. And, um, you know, it was just, it, it was a great experience, man. And then uh, just the, the teammates that I had. My first two years, we, we weren't that good. You, okay. you know what I mean? We, we, we weren't that good my first two years. Um, uh, that Princeton team was, was good my freshman, sophomore year. Um, and, and they were the guys that were, you know, freshmen and sophomores when Jerome and them were playing. Gotcha. And Ira Bowman and all those guys. And they beat up on them. So now they were juniors, you know, they were seniors, and it was time for them to take it out. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, it just, it just flipped a little bit. And then, you know, but we, 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 were, we, we competed, you know. I mean, we just, we just weren't that good. You know, we weren't, we weren't good enough. And, but, we, you know, we were always competitive, you know what I'm saying. And then our junior, senior year, we, we got better. You know, my freshman year, I was, I was fortunate enough to, to be uh, rookie of the year. You know, I was uh, in the Ivy League. I was rookie of the year in the Ivy League, and then I was, uh, you know, I was on a freshman team in the Big Five. Um, sophomore year, I was first team uh, in, in, the, in the Ivy League, and then I was, think I was, I was all Big Five my sophomore year as well. And then um, junior year, I was first team, uh, again, all Ivy. Uh, Should have got player of the year, but I didn't. They jerked me. You know, they, uh, we had, and this is, you know, we, we, they gave it to, to Brian Earl, who's a very good basketball player, you know, in his own right. Very good basketball player, player very constant, uh, accomplished, had a great career at, at Princeton. But we were up 33 to 9 on them my junior year at our place, and they beat us. Yeah, yeah. Black Tuesday, bad, bad experience. Jeez, One, uh, yeah, terrible, 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 terrible. Was the final score? What was the final score? Close or no? Yeah, it was close. They We had a shot to win it at the buzzer. Wow, and, and we missed, and and then they they won that game. So wow. they they came back and beat us that game, and then um. And so after that game, like we all felt, we all felt like shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just horrible, horrible feeling. You know what I mean? Still hurts me to this day. You know what I mean? It's one of, one of the worst days you know of 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 my life, and I'm fortunate that 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 is one of the worst days that I've that, that I've ever been a part of. You know. But it was a bad day, and and they won they won that game, and then we end up going on a tear. We didn't lose again until we played in the tournament that year, and then we beat them at their place. We mopped them at their place, mm -hmm. uh, the last game of the season. So, um, you know, they gave Brian Earl uh, Player of the Year that year, which was interesting to me because I averaged my numbers were better, and we won the league. So it was kind of like. You know, it was kind of it kind of pissed me off a little bit. So when we came back our senior year, definitely had something to prove. And and it was crazy because I, like, you know, you don't you don't you don't only thing you want to do is win. You know, you want to win championships. That's all you want to do. But you you kind of feel slighted when you weren't an, a unanimous first team pick in the Ivy League, but you uh -huh. were you were a unanimous first team pick for all Big Five. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I felt a little slighted. I mean, I was I was happy, happy as hell. We won the championship. You know, I was, I was really happy about that. But, uh, you know, the fact that they slighted me on that, you know, that was just extra, again, extra motivation yes. to come back senior year and set fire to everybody's ass. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when, our senior year, we, we went 14-0. Wow. And, you know what I mean? Yo, and, and, that's how y'all started out, 14-0? No, we went 14-0 in Ivy League. Oh, and I believe, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we started out. We started out uh, not good. I mean, we okay. lost to Kentucky. We lost to Kansas. Wow. Nova. <laughs> wow. You know, uh, so we we lost to some 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 heavy hitters early, but in league play, we ran through the league. We went fourteen and zero in the league, and mm -hmm. um, you know, ended up being champions again. Wow. So you know what I mean? And and th those are the things that you that you remember. You remember the teammates. 
and the championships. You know, that, that that's all that matters, you know? No, so. no doubt. So you, you played against um, Villanova. Who was that then? Um, uh, who Shit, was that my, then? Yeah, my freshman year, they had Alvin. They had uh, Tim Jason Thomas, Lawson. Jason Lawson. Jay, Jay Lawson. They had Howard Brown. Uh, John Celestan, uh, Gary Kittles, or no? No, nah, Kittles is older. He's older. Yeah, yeah, he Kittles, was, Kittles was, was playing yeah. with Jerome and them. Um, Raphael Biggis, Ray, Raphael man, Biggis. My, yeah, fresh, yeah, man, yeah. my freshman year, Nova, they, they, man, they, they mopped us my freshman year, <laughs> yo. Um, that was the one Big Five team I, I never beat was was Villanova. Yo. Villanova. Yeah, man, they, they, we had a chance to beat them, and Malik Allen, Malik Allen hit a damn buzzer beater, hit a hit a shot at the end to win it for for them. Um, I forget what year, maybe my junior year, um, but you know we had our chances and we came down. I think I think Matt missed a, a jumper, a baseline jumper to 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 put us ahead. But Villanova, man, they they mopped us, man. They started so they started Al six five, Howard Brown six five, uh, shit, uh, Tim Thomas was the three. Wow. I think J Law was the five. Is that and then John Celestan or no? Uh, Celestine came off the bench, and I think they had a uh, big, uh, big Chuck Cornegay was was at the four or something, or, or maybe biggest man. That's that was crazy. the that was the biggest damn <laughs> team that we played all year, dog. I mean, at the time, there you know, Al six five was this was the size of our center my freshman year. Our, <laughs> our freshman year was our center was 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 you know Jeff Owens was coming off the bench. Our starting center was like six six five six six. You know what I'm saying? Wow, that's crazy. So, that's yeah, that, that 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 shit was crazy, man. And that's then you know, crazy. yeah, man, it was the big five was was rocking back then too, man. It was, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, what was uh, what was life like? T tell me about what life transition. Tell me what life was like after Penn, and and kind of what your what your um. I did. Did you have any sights on trying to go to the NBA? Any trials? Um, and then what? Yeah, you, you know, know um, pro career. I I wanted to play professionally. You uh -huh. know, um, afterwards, I think. Every basketball player should aspire to play professionally. You know, um, that should be your dream to play at the highest level. Mine was to play. You know, yeah, I wanted to be. I wanted to play in the NBA. You, you know what I mean? And I was sniffed it. You know, I got. A, I got a little. Uh, uh, you know, I was close to it. You know, I got a chance to. I got a chance to play in the summer league with the with the Sixers, mm -hmm. and then I went to vet camp with the Celtics. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I play. I was playing well, actually. Uh, you know, myself and Rodney Elliott were the only. Only uh, you know, only college players that were invited to vet camp at, with the okay. Celtics. So, you know, and uh, I think both of us were, were playing well. You know, it was just a, you know, I, I think it was a numbers game at the time. You know, and and then being in the right place at the right time. You know, with the Celtics, uh, I was one, one last cut. You know, um, and I, I was playing well. You know, uh, you know, I was playing. Uh, the guards they had at the time was Kenny Anderson, who's one of my favorite point guards. You know, but he was he was old. You know, he was yeah, older, yeah. didn't move as well. You know, and Randy Brown. Okay. Uh, so I'm fresh out. You know, yeah, I, I, can run, right. I can play all day. So I'm running circles around my old head. You know. Uh huh. And uh, you know, and that, that Paul Pierce was. You know, he was just coming back from being stabbed at the time. Also, gotcha. so he was just getting wow. back into it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Then, you know, it. Walter McCarty was on a team. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. They had Walter McCarty. They had uh. You know. Antoine James, uh, Antoine uh, Walker, employee uh -huh. number eight. I get yeah. buckets, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, they had a young team, and Patino was coaching at the time, too. So he, you know, he wanted to pick up and play like he was playing at Kentucky. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, for me, it was, all right, yeah, I'm picking up full court. Yeah, I got no uh -huh. problem with that. You know, I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to make a roster, you know what I'm saying? And what was crazy, Calvert Cheney, who was one of my favorite, you know, uh, Indiana. college basketball players. Indiana. Yeah. 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 Calvert Cheney was one of my favorite college basketball players of all time. So, you know, he was on a team and they ended up, you know, trading Calvert Cheney mm -hmm. to Denver for Heron. Okay. So now when Heron comes, they got they got three point guards on the contract. Gotcha. I'm I'm out the door. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I'm out the door, and then that's so, what. So if that may not have happened, you think you may have. I think I could have stuck a little bit longer because yeah. you know, and, and it was crazy because then I went, and this is this is one of the craziest years you know uh, uh, that I've had in basketball. I I had after I got released, I had went over to France, and I got there on a Friday. Just, just, curious, just curious, agent or no? Yeah, I had an agent. I had okay, an agent. Gotcha. So yeah, so my agent, okay. my agent, my agent had sent me to France, 
And yeah, I got there on a Friday. I played Saturday. I was home Tuesday. Wow. Wait. Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 So I, I get there. So I mean, Friday, you get there and you, and you get there and you think you have a situation playing in France on a team. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know. You know, I'm going there and I'm thinking, all right, I'm, you know, I'm going to get a legit, a legit chance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I got there Friday, played Saturday. I got one practice in. I was jet lag. And then, but I, I didn't play bad. I only played 12 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did okay in my 12 minutes. Uh -huh. And I practiced Monday, Tuesday, I was on that, I was on the, I was on that bird back to the crib. Wow. Yeah. So, and then I found out that that team had switched out because you were only allowed two Americans. Americans, exactly. At the yeah. time when I played. So, now I'm back at the crib and I got nothing really. So, you know, I'm work. I'm actually working in the Wharton office for Professor Weigelt down at Penn, um, practicing with the JV team and helping coach the JV at the time, still hoping so I can stay in shape, still hoping I get a call to go play somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, months go by, months go by, still doing, still doing my, y'all, you know, I, I can play. Like it's guys that got gigs that, I cook. I know I can play. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? So I, I, you know, I'm staying, staying with it. Still working in the Wharton office. You know, for Professor Weigel, still doing the JV thing, working out with them, helping coach them, and everything. And then, um, you know, volunteering, helping the JV team. And then, you know, uh, my man TJ Zanin calls me. He's in like a third division Germany, and he's like, Yo, "Oh, TJ Zanin, that's my Westchester love Yeah, 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 yeah. My TJ man, my man Frank, TJ. Yeah, my yeah, guys, yeah. Man. So TJ calls me. And he's like, yo, MJ, why don't you uh, come play on my team over here? They're looking for a guard. They don't want to get relegated down the fourth division. They want to stay third division. He's like, they don't have a lot of money, but it'll give you a chance to play, get some film, and, you know, maybe you go from there. So I go over to Reckling Housing. You know, the name of our team was Old, Old Daddy Basket, you know, the ODB. One of my one of my one of my favorite rappers, you know, no Shimmy doubt. Shimmy, I like it raw. One of my no favorite doubt. songs, no you know doubt. what I'm saying? So, you know, that was that was kind of a sign in itself, you know what I mean? Initials of the team was ODB, it was no one doubt. of my favorite That's rappers. Hot. That's hot. You know what I'm saying? So I, I go over there, and you know, third division Germany is, is is you know third division anywhere. I think is it was a little different back then, you know what I mean? Like after the game, they bring in a case of beer. These guys drinking, you know, drinking beers and smoking cigarettes. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> but you know, so anyway, long story short. Um, you know, we, we keep the team in the, in the, in the league. They don't go down. Um, I come back home and I get an opportunity with the Trenton stars. This is in the IBL league. Okay. And I get this opportunity with the Trenton star and on that team, Malik Allen was on that team. Uh, Larry Abney was on that team who played at Fresno. He's now an assistant coach with the, uh, with the Clippers. Mm -hmm. He was on that team. Uh, Alvin Young who played in, in Europe was on that team. Prolific scorer. You know, played a lot of years in Italy. Was on that team, um, so I got an, I got an opportunity to play to try out on that team, and the way I got that opportunity was because I went to AFS. Okay. And you know, Mr. Faulkner, who you know who owned you know RIP, you know Harry Faulkner, um, he owned you know Faulkner Automobiles. Okay, Faulkner. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So that that was him. I went to school with his kids. You okay. know what I'm saying? And you know, I was I was good friends with, with his with his daughters and, and, and his son. I used to help his son, you know, train his son a little bit, you know, when I was in AFS, we used to play basketball together. And he knew the owner of the Trenton Stars. So he got me a tryout with, gotcha. with the Trenton Stars. And I ended up, you know, playing well enough to make the team in the Trenton Stars and and then the next year I had got an opportunity in second division of Spain, which is which is pretty damn good, you know. Like, first division Spain is 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 ACB. The second division is lead. So I, yeah. I got to play in the lead, and um, I got that opportunity because uh, Matt White, who played at Penn, and I think he was on a '79 team, had that went to the Final Four. He had a connection over there, and they were looking for an American guard that was cheap. And at the time, I was cheap. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to get my foot in the door. You know what I mean? And I and, I, and so I was. I needed the opportunity. They were willing to you know give me the opportunity and you know i got over there and again two americans but my teammate at the time was uh was big dwight stewart and you know some, some people may know some people not but dwight stewart played at arkansas you okay know, he was the, he was the original stretch five you know yeah so he was a big dude that step out and shoot that thing you know what I mean? yeah. 
uh, from Memphis, you know, so he had that country twang, you know what I mean? But that's right. Big Dwight, Big Dwight was a good dude, man. It was, he's one of my, uh, you know, one of my, one of my favorite people, man. He was a funny dude, big dude, could play the game, you know what I mean? He took me under his wing um, when I was over there. So, you know, we had a, we had a, we had a good, you know, we had a good run. We made the playoffs that year. And, you know, I think I averaged, I think I averaged about 17 that year, 17 to like seven or something like that. And, um, you know, got to play against some, some good dudes. You know what I mean? Uh, Gasol was over at, was playing with Barcelona at the time. Uh, uh, no, was I think, yeah. And then uh, Veragile was playing with Barcelona's young, with the younger team. Over hey, there. You against them? Yeah, yeah. We, wow. we scrimmaged them. We scrimmaged Barcelona. They were in the ACB, but we scrimmaged them. But uh, uh, Prigioni was, was in the league at the time. Um, a lot of NBA guys was was, was playing in, in second division Spain. You so know you played mean? against Gasol. You played against uh, what's the other name you mentioned? Uh, uh, Pablo Prigioni, I guess, an Argentinian okay. dude. You yeah, know, he was he was over there in the town that was an hour away, and I played for you know so for Muthia, which was in the south of uh, south of Spain, like an hour from the Mediterranean, which was it's a very nice small city. But you know, it was a great experience. I finally learned how to drive, you know, uh, standard car. You know yes, what I mean? yes, yes. So, you know, that that was a plus. And then from there, you know, I went to second division Germany. And uh I signed a one plus one deal over there. We were able to win the championship. And, you know, and what is and, that? What's what's that? What, a one plus one deal? A one plus one was if you know we signed I signed a, a deal that, you know, if we won the championship that they would have to bring me back the next year if we moved up oh, to the okay. first division. You okay. know what I mean? So over there, if you don't if you don't win a certain amount of games, you go down to second division. Okay. And the winner from the second division moves up and takes your spot. Gotcha. So we, I started out in second division Germany, and um, we won the league. Uh, we, we went undefeated in the league, you know, and then we moved up to the first division. So in my contract, it was a rollover. They had to bring me back. Okay. And then, okay. Is there more money or same? same? Oh, no, no, more money. It was, okay. it was more money. It was bonuses and, and, and all that stuff. You, you got to get all that. You get all that put in your contract, bonuses, gotcha. rights. You know all that stuff. You you make sure you get all that stuff put in there. Uh -huh. um, and in some places you get it, some places you don't get it. So <laughs> you know, what I mean, I was fortunate enough to be in a lot of places where I, where I got my bread and 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 everything else that we negotiated. So we we win second division, we move up to first division, and then we, you know, we make the playoffs, uh, come up a little short. Um, then I signed a two year deal with that same team. So coming back the third year. Um, we go through that, and then I think going into my fourth year of that contract, um, I got released. Okay. So I get I get released, um, and then I go to Latvia, and that's where I played with Rosh. I played with Rosh down in Latvia, Rashid uh -huh. down in Latvia. Oh, with or just with? Him? With with Rashid, I come on the same team. Oh, that's him. right, that's he did. Yeah, yeah, down in Bristol. So you playing so with Rashid? Yeah, yeah. Wow, so I'm, that's I'm playing. Dope. I'm I'm back playing with with with, uh, with Broken Bra again. So and I'm at down what, there. At, at what point did you realize? Did you know that that was the team that he was on, or you found out when you got there, or what? No, no. Um, I had found out that that was the team he was on. So I was like, yeah, that you know that that's my guy. You know what I mean? Yes, I yes, down yes. There. You know what I mean? Yeah, we we can. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's go. You know what I'm saying? So I get down there and I'm on a tryout, pretty much. And they wait eight games to decide they want to keep me. Wait, what? Yeah, well, yeah, wait, yeah. And you're, and you're playing? Yeah, yeah. I'm playing these games, but it's like a week to week. They can tell me they don't want me. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I'm waiting for them, you know, and if they and, – and, and as I said, everything happens for a reason because they waited. And while they were waiting, I was talking to – you know, I was – I'm friendly with a GM from Cologne. You know what I mean? And I know that they need a point guard. He's like, MJ, you know, I think that you're the guy that we need for this team that can get us over the hump. Gotcha. You know I mean, we need a point guard like you to get us over the hump. So I'm like, yo, let's let's go. Get me out of here. You know I'm out. Because these dudes taking all day to decide what they want anyway. Like, so, you know what I mean? Like, and I was just like, yo, I'm, I'm ready to come back to Germany anyway. You know what I mean? Like, y'all squad is nice. I definitely fit right in. Yeah, you know I mean, let's let's get it. So he comes down, he comes down to Latvia with the buyout money in a in a like a suitcase. I know that's right. Yeah, that's, straight, <laughs> Yo, that's like, gangster. Yo, know, Randy Moss, straight cash, homie. Yo, that's gangster. Yeah, you know I mean, so he come down to Jank with the with the with the buyout in the in the in the uh in the suitcase, put it on the John, pack my John, we go to the airport, I'm out. 
Yo, that was gangster in the suitcase yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, it came it came to came it down with in a, in a suitcase, a briefcase, you know what I mean? Wow. With the money. So he get him the buyout, John. We out. We go back to Germany and now I'm playing in Cologne. Um we win the championship. Wow. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I got, you know, I'm playing with Titus Ivory. I got uh, Emmanuel McElroy, who played at, uh, who played at uh, Cincinnati. Uh, Glenn McGowan, who was at, um, who played at for, uh, where, where'd he go? Uh, what's that beautiful school out on the West Coast? Uh, not Pacific. Damn, I'm drawing a blank. But he um, played out, he played out there. N another dude that was real good, you know, um, Mark, Martin, Martin, uh, Martin's Gortat, you know, who, who played in the NBA. I'm you know, for a time. long, you know yeah, for a long time, he was on that team. He was a young boy then, you know what I mean? Wow. Um, you know, uh, Alexander Nashvai, who was one of my favorite, favorite, you know, stretch fours of all time. You know what I mean? I learned so much by watching that dude play. His footwork is is impeccable. You, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's crazy, you know what I mean, how much I learned from, from, from playing with him. You know, he was a point forward, you know, original point forward, you know what I'm saying? It's one of the smartest, you know, he's – He's a Serbian, one of the smartest players I've ever played played with. Gotcha. You know I mean? So we ended up winning the championship that year, and we also play we play in the uh, the, uh, the Euro Cup, I think. So we play in the Euro Cup. So then, you know, over, overseas you practice twice twice a day. Okay. You play one sometimes. Some teams you only play one time a week, unless you play in a, in a cup game. So where you can travel and different countries, and you play like on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So gotcha. we were fortunate enough to be in a, a cup team. And we got to travel around, and we played. Uh, we played. Ended up playing in our bracket it was Cantu, um, uh, uh, Dynamo Moscow, and another team from Kiev, who where, where Lamar Lamar Greer played, in uh, in Kiev. You know what I'm saying? So we, um, you know, we got to play in that. So we got to be see, got to, you know during this time you get seen by other coaches in other countries exactly that may want to sign you for the next year. But so, you, 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 know, you, you, you may play with them, but you constantly showcase them. Yeah, yeah, you constantly showcase them. You know what I'm saying? So we win. We we uh we win the we win the German league, and then um, so now we're gonna we're gonna play. If they bring me back, we're gonna play Euro League. You know what I mean? And they decided they they didn't, they didn't want to bring me back. Wow. You know what I mean? So I was just like, damn. You know what I'm saying? So. They ended up signing one of my homies, the mom out. You know what gotcha. I mean? So and he came in and did it and did a great job for them, you know. Um they just thought that he would be a better fit yeah. for Euro League. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I, I would have loved to get the opportunity to compete in the Euro League to showcase against the, 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 the best of the best over there. Yeah. But, you know, it just didn't quite work out. Um yeah. so I ended up getting signed in Cantu to the team that we played in the Euro Cup. Okay. So I go to Italy. And Italy was awesome, you know, because every night you was playing against a top-notch PG, you yeah, know. What I mean? Yeah. So it was like, yo, you got to bring, you know, like every night I got to play against Pooh Allen, you know, towards the oh, end of his career, he was over there. Pooh was in Udine at the time. Wow. Uh, Travis Best was over there. Wow. Um, what's the boy? Uh, Tyus Edney was still was still playing. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, Reggie Freeman was over there. Uh, you, you know what I mean? It was a lot of dudes over there. Marco Bellinelli, all them dudes over there, man. Hey, so, hey, hey, hey pa pause that one yep. second. We we actually, we rocking, man. We rocking and rolling. Instagram is counting us down on our second hour. All uh -huh. right. We're going to close it out, come back, finish telling this story. A um, couple more things, man, and then we're going we gonna to have our Q&A. We're going to wrap it up. All right, bet. All right, come come on Sorry back. Like, I got no, 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 no. Long -winded. No, man, this is great stuff. This is awesome right. stuff. Shout out to Lenard Stewart. Said he got to put his son to bed. Great stuff, fellas. Hey, 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 Nard, make sure you come back, dog. We get into Please, that story. Please, come back, come back. We, we, we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back after these commercials. Part three of Legends Week with Michael Jordan, Abington Friends, University Penn legend. Um, he's currently talking about his overseas um, experience, man, which is crazy, crazy, crazy. Time is flying, man. Appreciate all y'all tuning in, man. Y'all stay tuned toward the end. Um, we definitely going to have our Q&A with, with M. Jordan. Um, it's just, you know, I just appreciate y'all tuning in, man. Appreciate MJ giving up all the all these classics, man, all these classics, uh, classic stories, man. Wait for my man MJ to come back on.
So like I said, if y'all been enjoying, man, um, you know, MJ's definitely got a lot of classic stories, man, from uh, his Sunny Hill days in the Philly area, uh, University of Penn, with all his accomplishments. Um, one of the things that kind of stick out to me, man, is that, you know, he, how he wasn't um, highly recruited in high school. Um, late bloomer, wasn't highly recruited, goes to Penn, you know, accomplishes pretty much everything that you get, you can accomplish. And, um, you know, has a, a really solid pro career, man. So that's just evidence that, you know, if you want it, you know, go ahead and get it. You know, if you want it, go ahead and get it. So uh, I'm going to wait for MJ to get back on. Frauds don't last. What's up, my guy? I hope you and your boy are safe out there, man. Young and I know he's still working on his game. I look forward to seeing y'all soon, man. Hey, so um Pick up where you left off, cause you you was you was you was you was dropping some legendary names. You said you was um, when you was overseas. Uh, the, the the last yeah. experience you was talking about. You was yeah, we was in Italy, man. It was it was some some ballers in that joint, man. And you know, Marcus Green was over there doing. Work. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, what's my man Lefty? Uh, Terrell McIntyre was over there getting busy. You, you know what I'm saying? So every night. You know, Marcus Gorey was in uh, Treviso at the time. Did you, did you, did you wind up, did you um, play against Marcus Green or any of his teams? Or yeah, no? yeah, yeah, yeah. We played. Oh, I played, did you? In, I think it was, was, I think it was Avellino. He, yes, was that? he did play for Avellino. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we played him when he, when he, when I was in Cantu, he played for Avellino. Wow. Um, you know what I mean? And, and I, you know, Mark, Mark was my young, was my young buck. You know what I mean? He came up, he played for Waterview. You know what I mean? Exactly. All the way from Morristown, played, played for Waterview. So, um, you know that just playing over there against all that competition. You know Marco Bellinelli, as I said. Uh, what's the what's the other tall boy? I think he, the, he got drafted by Denver. Um, Italian boy in the league. Uh, damn, John. Uh, but he beat me in a three point contest in All Star Weekend. Oh, no, uh, Gallinari. Uh, okay. Gallinari. You gotcha. know what I mean? So it was it was some um, it was some good dudes over there, man. And every night it was you know you had to bring it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know we had a pretty decent team. Did you um, did you play? Did you did you cross paths with John Linehan over there? Because I knew he was there. Right no, there. I did not. John spent a lot of his career, I think, in France. Okay. So, uh, and I, I've never played in France except for that one game that I played in France. <laughs> got you, got you, got you. So I didn't I didn't play against John John in Europe, but I played enough against John in, in the states that I, I didn't need to see him on the pro level. I saw enough of him in the high school <laughs> level. Uh, him, and no all, him, and all, him and all them Chester dudes, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, uh, you know, which was another great, you know, atmosphere to play when you played against guys from Chess, you know, him and and uh, Shaw and a hundred percent, you know, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, playing against them dudes was was incredible too because they always they had a nice little following with them too. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So that was that was always good. Hey, but, so how how does your um how did your um pro career kind of you know wind you know kind of yeah so up? yeah after um after Italy I had hurt my knee in Italy. Okay. And um, I had to get microfracture surgery uh, when I was in Italy. And pretty much what they do is they drill holes in your in your knee, and then they let the cartilage, they let the the scar tissue form as like a artificial cartilage. Uh -huh. So I had got and, and I I would have stayed in, in you know where I was, but they didn't they didn't offer me a they didn't offer me a contract. So I ended up going. I ended up going back over to, uh, you know, I ended up taking a deal in, in, um, in Belgium, in Charleroi, you know what I mean? And, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Probably should have never went there. Yeah. Because you know that's when 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 things started to go left. I would say. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, but the amount of money that they offered me to go play over there, like. You know, after having that knee surgery, I, I couldn't turn it down. You know, what no I'm doubt, no doubt. So you know, when I when I then I get there, and my teammates are like, "Oh, how, how's your knee?" This, that, and the third. I'm like, "Oh, it's getting better." You know, and they had to me, it was being said to me that they knew about the surgery, 
and they were gonna let me rehab. They had a bunch of good players, so it didn't matter. You know, yeah. when, when I get back, I get back. They were gonna let you take your time. Yeah, so I was like, shit, that's a no-brainer. Hell yeah, yes. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I get over there, and, and then, you know, it's time for everybody to do the, you know, the physical stuff and run and do all that. And I'm like, I'm not running. I'm not cleared to run yet. You know what I mean? Like, nah, this is, mm, I need a couple more months. So they like, huh? And then they want to negotiate my renegotiate wow. contract or wow. do all this. So it, it started off bad as soon as I got there. You know what I mean? So it was just a bad situation when I got there. The general manager was a, was a bit of a, a douche. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and you're like, oh, we, we didn't know that. You know, it's not. And I'm like, yo, I ain't trying to jerk y'all out of no money. Like, that's not me. That's not what I do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm up front, and it was brought to me that y'all knew. A hundred percent. was going to let me rehab, and you, you know what I'm saying? Because I signed a, a, a one plus one, you know, yeah, like, yeah, pretty much yeah. with, a, with an option. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not trying to jerk y'all out of no bread. You, you know what I'm saying? That's not that's not me. That's not how I operate. Uh huh. So, um, they ended up. You know, we we had we had some really good players, but what they did was they went and got. So now you can have more Americans at this point. Okay. So we got six Americans. Gotcha. And so they went and got six dudes that averaged seventeen on their wow. previous teams. Wow. Thinking like, yeah, it's just gonna work. <laughs> so I'm over there, you know. When I do finally start playing, you know, I'm diamond, and you know, I mean, because it's like, yo, it's only one ball. Somebody got a pass it, and I'm the point guard. So you know, what I mean, like, nah, let these, you know, we win, we all gonna eat anyway. You know exactly. Know? Exactly. So we ended up struggling a little bit early, you know. They fired a coach. Wow. But they, they keep hit the one assistant because he's from down that way. He speaks French. You know what I'm saying? But he ain't like me. And he's he's he was a prick, you know, to, to speak bluntly. He was, he was a bit of a prick. He didn't like me. I didn't really care for him either because he was an asshole. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and I beat him in the swimming. He's supposed to be this big shot Olympic swimmer. You know what I mean? And he kept running his mouth. So we raced. And I beat him. <laughs> and he was salty. You know what I mean? Like, it hurt his feelings. Hurt his pride. Did, yeah, we did the freestyle, and I smoked him. And Joker. he was like, he was a breaststroke guy. You know what I'm saying? So he kept trying to get me to challenge him in the breaststroke. And I was like, nope. Nope, you're going to hold that L. You're going to eat that L. You know what I'm saying? I know so he right. was mad. And we, me and him, we never had a good relationship. So gotcha. long story short, they bring in, a, uh, they bring in a, a Hugo coach. You know what I'm saying? And... You know, we're practicing and, and, and everything's going on. And one of the younger, one of the younger uh, Belgian guys, one of the younger Belgian players had, uh, you know, he was, he was a little bit of a douche too. You know what I mean? He would do dumb shit all year. You know, like I drive by and he tripped me, you know, uh, you know, always doing, always doing some sucker shit in practice. You know what I'm saying? But in the game, everybody scores on him. He, he don't do nothing. I'm like, yeah, you going to trip me and do all this to me. But, you know, in the game, you, you know, motherfucker, just go by you and get a bucket. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, it's only so much you you gonna take. You, you know, of course, what I'm saying? of course. So, and I'm just letting them know all year, like, yo, cut the shit. You know what I mean? Like, stop. You know what I mean? Stop playing with me, dog. Like, cut the shit. You know what I'm saying? So then one day he trips me, and you know, I, you know how it is in practice. You know, you you some pushing the shoving or whatever. So, and they're holding me back, and he holds off and he slaps me in the face. Wow. So now I go from zero to. 2000 you know what i mean i'm hot you can <laughs> fry an egg on you can fry an egg on my head you know what i mean and then to make it worse the coach sits us down and he's he's screaming at me as if i i started it so now i'm i'm pissed off even more so you know we we continue practice and i just you know i just i'm going at him in practice just killing him you know what i mean and then practice ends and i'm still hot so i'm you know, and I'm getting mine back. Like we gonna handle this now. Practice is over. We gonna handle this. Like we gonna we gonna set, get to the bottom of this. You know what I mean? And I don't recommend anybody else, anybody do this because I I left a lot of money on the table. Hindsight is twenty twenty. I should have ate that and kept it moving. Uh -huh. But you know, me being younger and you know, just pissed off. You, you know what I mean? I uh, you know I was waiting for him, and we was gonna box. You know what I'm saying? Because he, I think he crossed the line. I think he crossed the line when he, uh, you know, when he slapped me in the face, you know what I'm saying? And stuff like that happens all the time in practice. But once you cross the line, 
you know what I mean? Then you, you got, you know, you, it's a little different. So I wait for him, you know, after practice or whatever. And, uh, you know, Matt Walsh is on my team, Lynn Matella, you know, uh, Wesley, you know, Books and Big Dre from uh, that played at, Andre Reddick that played at Kentucky. He on the team. So I'm waiting for the ball and I'm a hitting, I'm, I'm a, I'm a piece. I'm hitting with a three piece in the business. You know what I, mean? I already know what I'm going to do. Well, Bob, so I'm glad good. you get into this part because my wife wanted to know. She was on there. She said, "Did you get at least get your smack back?" But go ahead, keep, keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm waiting to hit the man with a three piece and a biscuit. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm I'm good after that. After we boxes, we can go back to normal. So I'm in the locker room waiting, and you know Matt Walsh is keeping him on the court because Matt knows you know Matt knows what's about to go down. So Matt Walsh is keeping him on the court, and then. You know, Wes and, and Dre and, and Lynn, they're all like, yo, MJ, just go home, like, chill, don't worry about it, let it go, let it go, let it go. And they calm me down to the point, I'm walking out, I'm going to go leave, I'm going home. He comes in the locker room. Now we face to face, and I'm like, yo, what's your problem? And he shoved me. Wow. Like, like pushed my shoulder. So as, my, as this shoulder's going back, this hand's coming, bop. So, you know, and then we get into it and I get the best of them, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I'm, I, it's over. Well, it's not over with it then. So I leave, start to go home. The ball follows me out, out the, down the hallway. So I, you know, I piece him up again, you know? And then I finally go home. I come back the next day and he's looking like, you know, Kanye a little bit, his face <laughs> all locked up, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm normal, you know what I mean? So, you know, they ended up releasing me because of that and they're like wow. hey, yeah so yeah man so, and that's that's why i say you know i should have handled it differently because i did leave a lot of money on the table but you know it was it was a bad situation from the from the jump yeah and uh you know i ended up ended up finishing that season in greece you know but uh you know if i could do it all over again i probably should have ate that and just and just let that one go you know what i'm saying right. so then after that i had got released midway through the year and then i went to finish the season out in greece and that's when i played in pop down to Thessaloniki, which was which was crazy too. If you if you get a chance, go on. Um, no, he didn't get released. He they kept him. He was he was uh, he was he was a, a young Belgian Belgian idiot, and you know he thought he was hot shit. But they kept him. That's so crazy. I got I, I ended up playing in pop. And if and if any of you guys ever get a chance, um, I think this was like 07. You can go on YouTube and and and, and, and type in Pau versus Aris 07, you know 2007, and you could see the, the game that I pl that I played in the last game of the season, which was one of the craziest environments that I've ever ever played in. Like Raj had touched on earlier about how they would throw stuff at you, and uh, well, they didn't allow any of the Aris fans in there. And the, I was the the two teams were as close as Penn and Drexel. Gotcha. That's how close they were. You, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? So, and they hated each other. They hated each other in soccer. They hated each other in basketball. And Aris was was better was the better team at the time. So they didn't allow any Aris fans in there. It was just all of our fans. Because it, it, it would get crazy, like like Rashid Brooklyn bro was saying. Dude, when I tell you, like, there were a couple of Americans that I knew on Aris that I didn't go over to talk to because I didn't want to get hit with shit. You, you know what I'm saying? So, it, like, that's how crazy it was, like, wow. the amount of stuff. And it took us about an hour to start that game. But, you know, that's if y'all want to look at that, go check it out on YouTube. It's, it's, it's definitely up there. Wow. Uh, Pop versus Aris 2007. That shit was crazy, man. It was lighting fires in the gym and everything. Uh, <laughs> that's, was, what, that's what um, I was dying when Rashid Brooklyn broke. Yo, said. Fam, he fam, said, yo, setting, setting fires in the stands was normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dog. It was crazy, man. It was, it was like a riot in that joint. Yo, it was, it was, <laughs> How did like, you focus and play the game with all that going on? Look, man, it's, it was crazy, dog. It was one of the craziest environments I've ever been in. So then after, after that year, I ended up uh, – I started out the season – I think in, in Israel, I played over in Israel for about a month, month and a half. And then I got, I got released from Israel. I went home. Um, this was the time the Phillies won the pennant. That's how I know what year it was. I was home for that, which was awesome. And then I, I went back over to, to Bamberg, Germany, because uh, uh, their point guard got hurt. So I filled in for him. You know what I mean? When I went back over there to Germany. And then from Bamberg, I went back to Cologne. You know what I mean? So... You know, and I ended up playing in Cologne for the second time around. And that's when I played with, like, Jeremy Hunt, uh, you know, and, and Julian Terrell, my man, Hollywood, Hollywood Rob Turner. He used to be, you know, one of the dunkers for the Globetrotters. 
Pepperdine. That's where that's where he went. Pepperdine. Yeah. Gotcha. Pepperdine. So hey, hey, we, we got a, we got another legend in the building. We got Chuck Moore just joined. Shout so out to Chuckie the Moore. Chuck Chuckie Moore. Moore. See, Chuck was down there. Chuck was played on our Hill Squad. Chuck was down there with us and played on our um Contra Hogan team too. That's right. So he so he knows. He knows. Chuck been Chuck been through the gauntlet. <laughs> I mean, Chuck, Chuck should have came to Penn. Chuck should have came to Penn, but Chuck decided to go to Vanderbilt. You know no I mean? doubt. <laughs> and Chuck should have came to Penn. He know. <laughs> so then, you know, after that, uh, you know, I just spent the rest of my rest of my career in Germany. I played in uh, in the eastern part of Germany to start. You know, uh, probably my last. Oh, then I went to Hagen, and that's what they did. They did a little German documentary on uh, on that Hagen team. They were doing a documentary over there. And that's why all the people think I'm crazy. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of went off on, on on my team over there because uh, they was playing, they was, they were not playing hard, you know what gotcha. I mean? And uh, I take offense when, when guys don't compete. So I, gotcha. I went crazy on this, on this movie that this documentary that they were filming, and and, and then everybody thought I was it was crazy because they watched the, the last dance and was like, oh, Jordan's competitive. I'm crazy though, you know? What I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm losing my mind. That joint, that joint is on YouTube too. Because. You know, um, so did played over there in Hagen, and then you know this is my last year of playing. I start out in NBC over in Weissenfels, um, which is in the east part of Germany, and then I left that team halfway through and went to Gießen, and you know that's when I played with uh you know Ryan Brooks who who played at Temple in Lower Marion. He was on that team. Uh, Zach uh -huh. Peacock was on that team, um, who played at Georgia Tech and is now I think he's in he's finishing his career out in France. So you know I went to that team again because. They um, they were fighting relegation, and they wanted somebody to come in and, and make sure they don't go down. And I was, the year before, I went to Hagen because they were fighting relegation. You know what I'm saying? So towards the end of my career, it was like, yo, bring this dude in, so so we won't go down. This, you know, so we won't get relegated. And you know that that was kind of it. And then what, what, what was the last straw for me? Kind of was um, that last year in Geeson we had played my old team that released me and whoever lost was going to go down to second division. You know gotcha. what I mean? So we beat them. Gotcha. And I gave them hell. Cause you know, I was mad. I didn't like that coach either. You know what I mean? Like I love my coaches, but this guy was a weird dude. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking that they're going to keep the coach that was there. You know, what I mean, he, and he brought me in with him, so I was gonna stay another year there, maybe you know, maybe even start like kind of player coaching over there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then come to find out that they signed the coach from the team that we sent down to second division. So I was like, you know, I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm tired. And then my my daughter was born that year. Yeah, you know I mean? uh, my firstborn was born that year. So it was just like, you know, like, man, you know, I think it might be time. You know, I was still contemplating on going back over. And then, you know, I got the, I got a job, you know, um, somebody left the staff up at Colgate. And uh, my man, my backcourt mate, you know, uh, my brother, he had, he had a, a position. He said, look, man, I got a spot. You know, I think you do well. Wow. Let me know if you, if you, if you want it. You know? Wow. Yeah, so and that's how I got into coaching, which was, which was great. You know what I'm saying? So that, that goes back to, you know, the AFS, the pen. Yeah, you know, those to, relationships. Yeah, yeah, man. It's the relationships that you, that you build. And, you know, I've known Matt since 96, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm forever grateful that he gave me my first coaching opportunity. Wow, a and major I, one, too. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> I, I got right in to coaching. You know what I mean? I didn't have to, I didn't have to do the, the other stuff. You know, sometimes you have to start – Coaching you know, on the high school level. Yeah, or... sometimes you have to do be like a GA and and all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Hey, real quick, shout out, shout out to we got we got Joe, we got some more legends. We got Joe Mead in the building, man. Shout out to my man Joe Mead, man. Joe hey, Mead, man. he ain't never let he ain't never met a shot he ain't like. That's <laughs> Westchester, you know man. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, man. We had some battles too, man. You know what I mean? For sure. For yeah. sure. So you know, like, but. You know, so then, you know, that's and that's that was pretty much the end of it. You know, that opportunity to coach, and I was contemplating on going back over or if I should coach, but you know, it was like, you know, it's time to start this next chapter because you may not have this opportunity again to yeah. just get right in the, of just course. to get right into coaching. So of course, and, and then then I started up there, and I've I've been there for eight years. Wow, 
That's amazing, man. So, so, so when you think back over your entire hoop journey, you know, you're still involved with the game, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, when, but when you think back over your entire journey, you know, you're a late bloomer, you know, you, you try out for the, for the, for the high school team, you know, you're getting cut, da, da, da. you're doing the Sunny Hill thing, John Hartnett college, all that overseas running around. When you think about that, about that entire journey, what's some things that you learned about life? Like what's some things that the game taught you? Um, and just, you know, that some things that just, you'll, you'll never forget. Um, I would say my, my, the experiences, you know, um, and the friendships that I've made, you know what I'm saying? Like the game has afforded me the opportunity, you know, to visit and experience a lot of things that without it, I don't think I would have, you know what I mean? So, you know, just to, 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 to befriend and to experience different cultures, to meet all different types of people, from all different types of backgrounds, religions, you know, um, colors, you know, just those things. I would say the, the, the um, you know, my experiences and and the people that I've that I've crossed paths with, you know, both good and bad, have mm -hmm. all have all you know taught me lessons. You know, I've all I've learned from every every single experience and every single person that I've crossed paths with, that I've played with, that I've got to meet. You know, even outside of basketball, but I wouldn't have met without basketball, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I've, I've learned to control, control my temper uh -huh. you know, and learn how to let some things, how to let some things go. You gotcha. know I mean? Some things you, you just got to learn to let go. And, and I think that's, that's, that's something that I learned is to, to listen, to learn and to improve. No doubt. Well, one of the last questions I have, man, before um, we get to the Q and A, hey, people, I appreciate y'all. It's late. Appreciate y'all. This is this is hoop gems right here. This is priceless stuff, man. Told uh, directly from a man, MJ. Um, so one last question for myself, and I'll let the people ask you a couple of questions, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll we'll wrap it up. Um, yep. If you can, real quick, just talk to any younger players uh, who are watching this now, or who may see this in the future on YouTube yes. or anything. Um, what's some um, keys to success, and just some words of advice you have for some young basketball players right now? Um, I would just say play, play hard, and play the right way. You know what I mean? Like, learn from the people that did it before you because mm -hmm. they can they can help you a lot. You know what I mean? Be a sponge. You know what I mean? Like, soak up all the info that you can and constantly, constantly, you know, get in the gym. There's a lot of money out there and a lot of things that that, that round ball mm -hmm. can, can get you. You know what I mean? It can get you a lot of opportunities. It can get you you know, to places, you know, use it while it's using you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I would say just, you know, listen, learn, um, and continue to improve. You know what I'm saying? Play hard and play the right way, you know, because now playing hard is a skill. So that's a skill you should have because not everybody plays hard. And nowadays you can get, you can get a check by playing hard. That's you know, right. Playing playing defense, you know, rebounding the ball. You That's know what right. I'm so those are things that were, that, you know, were taken for granted back when, when I was playing. And now it's just, it's a skill That's that, right. you get, that you can get paid for. You can be That's a specialist. Right. That's you can right. be a defensive specialist. Yep. You know? And the guys that are defensive specialists will tell you, you know, my man that's in the league right now, he'll, he'll tell you straight up. Like, you know, that's why he, he, he hangs his head on his defense. Yep. You know? So. Well, we appreciate it, man. Um, yep. uh, one another shout out to another legend, Temple Narstown legend, Temple legend. We got Khalif Wyatt in the building, man. Marathon, shout out to Marathon Sports, Khalif Wyatt in the building, Temple, man. Um, hey, people, hold on, I turn. see Dev Smith, Dev Smith up in there, Tex Mac. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Marcus Green joined us again. Um, hey, people, it's your turn. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to you guys. Start typing some questions. Um, we, we got a few more minutes uh, before we tune out. Uh, people ask my man MJ some questions, man, about high school, Sunny Hill days, Penn, having some friends, any questions? Uh, okay. Um, oh, oh, my man um, Preston wants to know who was better, LP or Chuck Moore? Rest in peace, LP. <laughs> LP or Chuck Moore? Oh man, that's a that's a good that's a good question, man. Um, 
Oh man, that's a good question, dog. I, both of them was pretty pretty good, yo. Well, bro, just think, just break just break down their games. I think I think Chuck was. I think Chuck. I'm, I'm gonna have to go with Chuck more. LP LP was a, was a problem, but I, I think I'm, I'm gonna have to go with Chucky more. Was was with, with a slight edge over LP. You know, no RIP. No doubt. <laughs> No, hey, 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 hugs. I gotta answer the questions, man. You know I'm gonna keep it a hundred. But both very good players. Um, I would say I would give Chucky more the slight edge. No doubt. Um, any more questions? Come on, y'all shoot, shoot some, uh, shoot some questions at my man MJ. Let's get some interaction going here before we tune out. Um, Marcus Green wants to know best atmosphere you played in overseas. Uh, I would have to say, uh, you know, Cantu was crazy, Mark. You, you know, what I mean, you you played down in, in, that, in that gym. It was cold sometimes, but. Cantu was crazy. Um, Cologne was was crazy. Um, and when I played in Artland, you know, Artland over in uh, Quackenbrook, Artland Dragons, you know, because that town they didn't have, they didn't have, they didn't have soccer. So basketball was the main thing. It was another small town, like three thousand uh, people, three thousand people, you know, seat gym. So you know that John was crazy. So I would say, I would say in um, yeah, in Cantu, uh, Artland. And then um, Cantu, Artland, and, and uh, Cologne were, were, were awesome for me. And then the, the craziest experience was when I played in Greece. Like, that was, that was, that was nuts. Um, we got a light-skinned white girl wants to know, uh, what grade did you start going to Abington Friends? You, you answered that like an hour ago, but you can break yeah, it down. Yeah, I went, I went to Abington Friends in the ninth grade. So I, I repeated the ninth grade. I did a ninth grade year at Germantown High School, and then I went to transfer to Abington Friends and, and repeated the ninth grade. Got you. Um, did you almost make it to the league? 29 Dre wants to know. Uh, 29 Dre, I, I was close, man. I was summer league team, and then I was one of the last cuts with the Celtics. Uh, you know, it's just uh, timing. Timing is everything, you know, timing the numbers game. I thought I played well enough to make that team. Um, when I was in France, it was crazy because uh, both Kenny A and um, uh, uh, Brown got hurt, and then they ended up signing Doug Overton. And Milt Palacio. And Doug, Doug is my old head. You know, Doug is another guy that I learned a lot from because he played for John as well. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's all, everybody's all connected. Got you. Um, Sir Fries wants to know, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of struggling to read the question. It says, was no, Akbar? He's, he's, he's talking about my brother. He's talking about oh, okay, my brother. Okay, okay, okay. Yo, no, Stafford is trash, dog. He can't, he can't mess with me, dog. <laughs> he's a bum. He can't shoot me. He can't go right. He only can go left. Come on, dog. He just dribbles the ball all the time. You think you're from New York or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my man, Big D's 5353 wants to know, do you still hoop? You still got game? Yeah, man, I still get out there uh, when I can. I, I play, uh, I'm a more of a stretch four now than I, than I am a, a, a VG. I play more stretch four. I play a old man slow game, but I still get out there. <laughs> a lot, I still a lot, get out a there. Lot, a back to the basket now. I, I try to, I try to get, I try to play as much as I can, you know, um, and I try to get in practice as, as much as I can um, with our guys. When Like if anybody is injured or anything like that, you know, coach will throw, throw me in practice, which is, you know, are my favorite days, <laughs> you know, no when I get to get out there and still play. Um, somebody, with Colin Fitz, thirty-four, wants to know uh, what's the most, what's your most rewarding part of coaching, and would you ever want to be a head coach? I guess you know what's your most rewarding part of coaching. Period. Um, I, I think the the, my, the most rewarding part for me is that I still get to be around the game, and I still get to mold, you know, and I'm allowed to mold young young men to be better people and better basketball players, and and it's it's for me it's to watch a kid get better, you know, uh, to become a better man and a better player. So, gotcha. and of course, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I would love to, to be a head coach. Got you. Oh, this, this, this question is great. It's four parts though. All right. So toughest players you've guarded on four levels. So first in high school. Okay. First in high school, T toughest player you guarded in high school. Um, man, I'm telling you, it was, it was so many dog. I, <laughs> I don't leave anybody out, but like, you know, like Jared Kears, uh, you know, Marvel Connor, um, shit, uh, Al Williams, you know, Colson, all those, man. Hey, right now, now at, at the John Hart Network workouts. And the John Hart Network workouts, man. All, all the big guards would give me problems when I was younger because they would just post me up. But like Aaron McKee, you know, Eddie Jones, you know, those guys are coming down at AI. 
would come down what? there. Wow. You know, Alvin Williams, you know, so it was a lot of a lot of good a lot of good players down there too, man. Um in college at Penn. College. Uh you know a lot, again, a not a lot of good guys. A lot of good guys. All the big five guys. You know what I mean? Or were all the guys that I played against in high school as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So then, you know, we would play some nationally ranked teams. Um also, but I I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you a story about uh, one guy who was hard as hell to guard. And this is gonna surprise some people, but you know, um it was a guy that played at Harvard. Um I can't remember his name right now, I'm drawing a blank. It's it's Tim something. And this dude was quick on quick. Mm-hmm. White dude. Lightning fast, could shoot. And when we played them, Dump instructed everyone not to help. <laughs> so no help. And I got to pick this dude up full court. And he is lightning quick. He can shoot. You know what I mean? But Dump, you know, the game plan was you guard him by yourself, no help. <laughs> <laughs> guys were instructed not to help. So that was one of the tough, toughest guards that I had because, you know, I I don't ask for help a lot, but, you know, sometimes you need it. You know, no guys, you guys getting a ton of screens and stuff. You're like, yo, a dog. But, you know, every time we played them, I would have to guard him, you know, full court and chase him around all game. And I wasn't getting any help. So wasn't wasn't looking for it. You know what I mean? Like, you knew you wasn't getting any help. Yeah, and then uh, in the pros, somebody one of the toughest guys. Um, the in the in the pros, I was um again a lot of dudes, man. A lot of dudes were were very talented, but I do remember, um, I was in Italy and I'm guarding Marco Bellinelli, mm-hmm. and I think I got the film of this game. But he was lighting me up, dog. Like, and I'm in, I'm sitting in his hip pocket every time he catches the ball. But he's six, 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 seven. He just raising up over me. <laughs> going this way, coming off of seven screens, back screen, up, stop, going off, of, coming off another staggered on the other side. And I'm right on his hip, right in his pocket, on the catch. And he just raising up, lighting me up. So that was that was a hard guard for me because he could shoot the ball. He was so tall. And, you know, he got a million screens. So he was one of the one of the toughest guys to guard. But, you know, I played against a lot of, a lot of really good players, man. A lot of really good players. And, and you had to bring it, you know what I mean? But – and and even though the and, and even though the, the the guys that I that I guarded, you know, sometimes they did get buckets. They earned every every one of them. You know what I mean? You know. So, got you. Um, one last question. Um, uh, do you still go back overseas to visit? Um, yeah, Leak more. Yeah, Leak was tough, man. Leak had a, a million hesitations. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let me answer the jump. She Bay tough. Another tough guard. Stokes. You know what I mean. Uh, Jimmy Dillon, yeah, 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 yeah. Ryan said Jimmy Dillon, yeah, yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy Dillon, Jimmy Dillon had a good game against us, and uh, when we played Holy Ghost Prep in high school, um, but I didn't have any legs that game. My legs were tired. We're not gonna get into that. Why wow, my legs was tired, but <laughs> young, young, immature mistake. You know what I'm saying? So, um, three shots. What do you What do you say? Do I ever go back overseas? Uh, go back up. I, I went. I had the opportunity to go back over this summer. We had taken our team to Italy, and we did our team trip to Italy this summer. And um, you know, and when the team came home, my family and I had went back over to Germany and we went and visited some friends and visited my old team and stuff like that. So that that was pretty cool because I haven't seen them in a long time. So it was real nice to get back over there and and see those see those people. Gotcha. What As else? a father, what will be the main thing you will share with your kids? They want to be so. Ah, so that nice, a good one. Yeah. As a um, father, yeah, what will be the main yeah. thing you want to share with your kids uh, if they want to be successful athletes? Okay, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I talk to to them a lot about it, and you know, my 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 eldest, she's nine. She says she wants to be a player, and and I tell her all the time that. Uh, how you want to be a player, but you you don't ever practice. That's another one. Excuse you know, you don't ever practice. You don't ever play. So for, to be successful, you have to practice. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to put in the work. And if you don't, then you're not going to be successful. You know, you, there are no shortcuts. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to go in there and you got to put in the work because when you're not working, somebody else is. Yeah. And there's only a, a, a small amount of people that get to play. You know what I mean? So if you want to be a part of that that small little group, 
you, you got to put in the work. So I, yes. I would say, you know, hard working. Uh, impressed. The the best player from my neighborhood. Um, so I can, yeah. I think it said like some off, uh, and then I guess may, may, that may be a two part question. Yes. Said some off the some off the radar guys that may not get be mentioned a lot. Yeah. The the um, I would say, uh, Larry Kearse, man. Uh, and some you know people, anybody from my neighborhood on here that's watching would know him as Larry Black. Um, yo, man, this dude was, this dude was all world, man. Like he, he was. He was just as good as Aaron and, and all those guys. Like, he, he, he could play basketball. He was good at football. He was good at baseball. I mean, this dude, if he, if he would have, you know, went the, 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 proper, the proper channels, you know what I mean, and, and wasn't in the other stuff, he, he – dog, I'm telling you, like, this dude was incredible, man. Like, he, he, I've seen him give, give guys dope business and he was yeah. good at everything you know what i'm saying yeah. but he just you know he just just wasn't doing the right things and and it didn't work out but he was incredible you know what i mean joe um, me mentioned um jonathan haynes oh well. yeah john john haynes is a legend you know what uh -huh. I mean? that's that's he's a legend he's one of the best he's one of the best high school players that i've ever seen in my life uh-huh you know what i mean like he's one of the best that i've ever seen in my life wow you know, we, me and ryan used to watch film of of john haynes wow you know what i mean Watching John Haynes had, you know, it's a funny story. Watch, I'm watching the John Haynes video with Ryan. John come down on the break, and he in and out the ball. You know, he whip it between his leg, and then he threw a, a pass, you know, a little pass to somebody, you know what I'm saying? So me and Ryan, I'm like, yo, I'm going to do that John in the game. I'm going to do that John in the game. I'm going to do that John in the game. So my junior year, I do it, and, or maybe it was my senior year. I don't know. Press, what, what year was that? <laughs> um, I, I, did, I do it in the game. We up like 30 in the championship. And I do it in the game, right? And I'm on my way to a triple double too. So, but I do it in the game, and my man gets an and one, and the other team got mad, yo, and started a brawl. And what? Up, yeah, they ended up calling the game, yo. Yo, you serious? <laughs> yo, it was crazy. In my senior year, yeah, that drone was crazy, yo. They uh they started a brawl, man, and because they was you know it was crazy, dog. That's wild. <laughs> and this is the Friends League, yo. You ain't supposed to be fighting in your friends, friends League. league. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, well, um, that, that's pretty much it, man. Um, unless you want to, you know, uh, interact with the people anymore. But uh, that's pretty much it. That's everything that I have, man. Okay. Um, you know, uh, just want to say thank you again, man, for your time. You know, these three hours, man, two two hours and 45 minutes of your time. No, the man, thanks down, for having me, man. The, I appreciate it. The trip it, down dog. memory lane was priceless dog just just telling all the stories and your recollection of everything man thank you so much um thank for your you know thank you for your contribution to the game thank you for all your support supporting raw sports supporting the old school stuff man and um you know any any last things you want to you want to mention or say before we tune um no nah, man i just want to say you know for everybody you know be safe out there man we we uh we're, we're we're living in troubled times right now, you know, with this COVID stuff and then all this other stuff that's going on, man. Just just be safe out there, dog. Just be safe and, and protect one another as best you can. Take care of your take care of your family, friends, and, and check on check on your check check on your people, you know. Check on your people, man, because uh, it's a little wild out here with us for us right now. Yeah, um, and just to answer, uh, Sergio, somebody, uh, yes, the the entire interview will be on YouTube. So if anyone miss the first two hours or miss the first hour uh what i'm gonna do is um after we end this i'm gonna upload the entire interview to my youtube channel uh, if you just go to youtube put in raw sports films on youtube uh you'll see the logo you'll be able to watch the entire interview there um again mj uh all my guys that tuned in we had some legends i think this was probably the most legends that tuned in we got we got ryan Preston. we got joe me we had rasheed brooklynboro uh we had marcus green we had Tons of legends um, tuned in, man. So that this is what it's all about, man. I appreciate all y'all tuning in. Everybody likes to talk about the old school, man. I appreciate y'all, man, for real. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yep, yep, yep. Bless you. Bless your family, man. And um, no doubt. Oh, just a little FYI. Um, legends Week um, this season two is it, it, ending tomorrow, and we, we're going out on a high note. Um, I got my man F Ronald Flip Murray. Ooh, um, Flip. Yeah, we, we got Flip. <laughs> Flip Murray going to tune in tomorrow. He's going to end Legends Week uh, Season 2. So tomorrow night, Sunday night, 8 o'clock, 
Tune in for Flip Murray's story. We're going to talk about how he got the shawl. We're going to talk about mansion. We're going to talk about the league. We're going to talk hey, about it all, Flip, man. Flip was a problem, too, dog. Flip, Flip <laughs> was a problem. I'm definitely tuning in on that one. Please, 8 o'clock. Everybody come back so we can y'all can hear Flip's story, man. Thank hey, you. Star, hold, hold on one second. Hey, 29 Dre, for the record. <laughs> None of my brothers were ever better than me. Uh, I, I keep seeing that same question yeah, pop up. Yeah, not ever. No, no way, not ever. All right? <laughs> no. <sighs> oh, man, cool. Hey, thank you, MJ. I appreciate it. All right, it. man, thanks for having me. Appreciate you, bro. My man. Yeah. Right. Peace.